a junior. Powell wide to the right. Gay dash for a couple yards and finally that Marshall defense and defensively uh, the ends are Tony Lelly and Marty Palazzetti. The defensive tackles are Jeff Borman and James Wines. The nose guard uh, Ethan Fields. The linebackers uh, John Segley and John Logan. And that secondary with Leon Sims, that strong corner, Brian Gerald, strong safety. Mike Copenhaven, the uh, free safety, and uh, weak corner is Garfield Lewis. We've got an injured player, a timeout on the field. There's a timeout with a little over nine minutes to go in the first quarter. Marshall leading 7-0. We'll be back at Fairfield Stadium in just a moment. If money is the only thing between you and a college education, then you have a good reason to come over to First Bank of Cerrito. Getting a good education can be very expensive, but having that education is well worth it. That's why First Bank is making student loans. Stop by and pick up your student loan application today. Our loan program applies to out-of-state schools, too. Money for your education. It's another good reason to come over to First Bank. First Bank of Cerrito. Member FDIC. Don's Carpet House on US 23 South in Louisa gives you name brands at low, low prices. Check out Don's prices before you buy. Chances are you'll save money. Why are Don's prices so low? Because Don's low overhead allows him to keep his costs down and pass the savings on to you. Don's is open from 9 to 5 daily and he offers free estimates. So visit Don on US 23 South just past Louisa. And remember, coal puts food on your table. Tonight's uh, Marshall football game is brought your way by the First Bank of Cerrito, where you've got a good reason to come over to First Bank. Third and four, football about the 17. Gordon dropping back. Now the pass rush over the middle. He's got Simpson. Simpson fighting his way towards the six-yard line. Rick Simpson, starting flanker the last two years for Eastern Michigan, grabbed uh, 35 receptions uh, last season. He's a tough one. And it's going to be first and goal for this Eastern Michigan team. And I'll tell you, they are much improved. They did not score offensively against Youngstown State. Uh, their only score came on a touchdown interception by Matt Finley. But their offense looks impressive here in the first period. They are knocking on the door now against the herd. It is goal to go. Ball at the eight-yard line of Marshall. I formation. Simpson is wide to the right. This is the tailback Vernon. He is dropped around the five-yard line. Darren Vernon who's outstanding on kickoff returns. He was second in the Mid-American Conference last year. That Canadian ball player, a senior 188-pounder, moving the ball close to the five-yard line. The way they've only thrown one time in this series, and it wasn't completed, as you saw a moment ago, and they're staying basically on the ground now and exploring that Marshall defensive line. You notice when they go over the right side, keep your eye on number 50, a 275-pound right tackle for Eastern Michigan. More about him in a moment. Here is second and goal from just outside the five-yard line. Eastern is threatening the Hurons. There's number 36, Gaydash. They're going off that right side, and number 50 is a 27-year-old right tackle. He left high school weighing 165. He now weighs 275. He was a paratrooper in the U.S. Army, <laughs> and right now at age 27, he is a key man offensively off that right side. Yeah, he's about your age now. <laughs> I'll tell you, he is a hoss. 275 no was 165 when he graduated high school. Gained a few pounds. Yes, Ate well. Did. He sure did. Third down, goal to go at the four-yard line. Big test for Marshall's defense early in this game. The quarterback, Gordon, wants to throw to the outside and to Simpson. He can't hold on to it. Brian Gerald, the freshman from Milton, covering. And we may get a field goal attempt here. It is fourth down, the ball at the four-yard line. Here it is again. Here's Gordon now. He was a backup quarterback for a couple of years and uh, getting his shot now. Just a little bit overthrown uh, on the receiver, but uh, not a bad throw at any rate. In the ball game for the field goal attempt, a soccer-style kicker born in the Dominican Republic. Uh, he played at Northern Michigan University and was outstanding there. It is Mario Ferretti, number nine. He's a junior right now. Looks like a chip shot here. It's to be a, from about 21 yards out. It is good. So with the field goal, it is now Marshall 7, Eastern Michigan University 3. 
We'll be back for the kickoff at Fairfield Stadium here in the first quarter in a moment. Bonnie's makes each pizza just for you. We start with our delicious tomato sauce, then add your favorite toppings like pepperoni and sausage. Then we pile on lots of cheese, bake it till the crust is just the way you like it, and serve it piping hot. Giovanni's also offers delicious sandwiches, Italian dinners, or baked Italian dishes. To complement any of our dinners, a wide selection of salads and beverages are available. Giovanni's, corner of 20th Street and 5th Avenue, right next door to Stationers, alternate Route 10 across from Guyana States in Barbersville, Crossroads Mini Mart, 863 Norway Avenue, Giovanni's Catlettsburg, and Giovanni's in Lavalette. What would you call a zenith that puts a 25-inch picture in a 19-inch space? Smart, real smart. And for continuous color balance, a computer brain. A brain is smart. Plus parental control that locks out channels you don't want. Now that's smart. The Smart Sets, advanced system three from Zenith, when you want everything. We have seen a lot of offense here in the first seven minutes plus of the first quarter, Mike. We sure have, and one of the big problems that the Eurons have had, uh, as you know, they lost 11 straight. They win the first ball game last year here, but uh, doggone, you know, uh, they've had trouble putting points on the board. They show little problem tonight, and uh, Marshall's going to have to say, hey, these guys are for real, and we're going to have to stand up and play some hard-nosed football. Don Bessling will kick off for Eastern Michigan. Beaten a couple weeks ago by Youngstown State, 31-7. And as we said, uh, had the week off. They've regrouped, and uh, they look very impressive in that uh, initial drive. Marshall, of course, coming off two super wins. And one thing Marshall cannot do, they cannot look past this game to next week's big game with Furman. If they do, they will be in serious trouble. They sure will. You know, this is probably the best personnel that they've uh, probably played so far this season in Eastern Michigan. And uh, they need to get these guys into their belt, get after them, and uh, go out there and play hard. No, it's like they've done, and that's the recipe. Bessling booms the football, and it is going to be Abercrombie. Drops the ball, picks it up about the two-yard line. And this time he has dropped about the 16-yard uh, line. Quite a contrast to that uh, earlier return. It sure was. That's good downfield specialty where Jamie Brooks, the defensive man, got down there that time, made a good hit on him. And Marshall doesn't have real bad position. Let's see what they can do now. Also interesting to note that this Eastern Michigan team won only one game last year, and it was over Marshall, 7-3. to three. They scored in the fourth quarter to overcome a 40-yard field goal by Scott LaTulip that had given Marshall a 3-0 lead for three quarters plus. Here's first down Marshall without good field position at the uh, herd 16. And Mike McCoy, the freshman, is going nowhere, and you know that field goal and that... Uh, Impressive drive by Eastern Michigan. Surely the Eurons are fired up right now. And that defense uh, led that time by Mike Burns. He's a freshman. The linebackers, uh, Joe Palka, a sophomore from Toledo. He was a walk-on. The sensational Matt Finley, a sophomore from Ontario. Another linebacker is Jim Durham, number 38, a senior. Second down for Marshall. Second and long. They need about 14. Ball back around the 12-yard line. Fodor's going to throw to the outside. Abercrombie at the 20. Danny entered this ball game with nine receptions for 117 yards and three touchdowns. Short of a first down. And it'll be third down for Marshall as Brian Swisher, number 22. Here it is again. Here's Danny out of the backfield, and uh, as you see, they're trying to bring him down there, Robert Thompson and people, but uh, Marshall still has some work to do. They still uh, need seven more for a first down. Approaching the six-minute mark of the opening quarter, and we're so delighted you could join us again from Fairfield Stadium for Marshall Football on Channel 61. We'll be back here next week for the Furman game. Here's Fodor. Trying to find Lewis, he was double covered and the pass of course was off the mark and uh, Marshall, the first time they had the ball they made it look easy but this Eastern Michigan team, they've made some adjustments, they put a little bit more pressure on Folder and uh, we are in for quite a ball game. I think you hit the key word there, the pressure was on Carl that time and Anthony uh, uh, Fields was the defensive back and he almost had an interception on it, the ball wasn't really greatly thrown but Marshall found out that they've got some work to do and here we go. Salmons kicking to Darren Powell. Mike Salmons is a 12th punt of the season. He's been averaging 43 yards a punt. He's 6'4", 
out of Sistersville High School, 223-pounder transfer from West Virginia University. Gets a little bit of a roll there, and uh, the football is being marked at the Eastern Michigan's 38-yard line, or in that vicinity. Eurons under Jim Harkema in his second year. He's brought in a lot of young players from the uh, Detroit and greater Michigan area. Quarterback is a junior, Robert Gordon, who's a backup uh, the last two years. High formation with the Gate Ash and Vernon, the running backs. Gordon being chased here. Intended for Darren Powell. Powell's a senior out of Detroit, who last year, by the way, caught a touchdown pass uh, from Gordon in uh, the game against Kent State. Tony Lilly is the linebacker that time. They really gave him a lot of pressure. Of course, he was double covered out in the secondary, but uh, pressure was the key, and that's really what caused the pass to go awry. Second down for the Hurons of Eastern Michigan University at their 38-yard line, second and 10. Over five minutes to go in the opening quarter. What a great night it is for football. We've got uh, the chilly weather now. Great run here by Darren Vernon. Look at him go. And finally, it is Garfield Lewis dragging him down inside the 40-yard line. And Eastern Michigan really penetrating. And a flag was dropped, though, back at the 42-yard line. This could cost uh, the Hurons a big game, Mike. It sure will. It's a darn shame, but that's what gives coaches gray hairs. And I'll tell you one thing right now. David Tegg, the offensive guard that time, opened up a hole like Mammoth Cave. And Vernon found it, went out there, spread it out for the first down into the uh, Marshall secondary. And as you see, it's all coming back. It's for night. I think this Eastern Michigan team was a bit uh, underrated uh, after they lost their opener. They have shown us uh, a lot of potential. There's a hole there that you could drive a Mack truck through, I guess they say in the business. But here he goes. And you see the secondary trying to drag him down at the last second, and luckily they did. They've got uh, some dangerous runners, especially in Darren Vernon and Gary Patton, their tailbacks. Okay, the penalty really helping the herd now. Second down and about uh, 17 back at the Eastern Michigan 31-yard line. Marshall leading 7-3. Gordon wants to throw, and he's got time over the middle. And looks like a super reception up to the 47-yard line by the senior, Rick Simpson. This young man, as we said, uh, he is already seventh in career receptions at Eastern Michigan University, the top uh, scorer and receiver last year. And uh, he isn't even listed as a starter, but he's putting on quite a show, Rick Simpson. He just came out of his flanker spot and uh, just sprinted out there and... Uh... Right under the umbrella, as they say, and another completion and another first down. No, not quite. They're a yard shy. They're going to take a long look here, and uh, looks like the, the sticks will be brought in. Just a final thought on last year's game. Uh, Tim Kendrick was the quarterback for Marshall in that game. As we said, Eastern Michigan won it 7-3. to three. Eastern Michigan uh, at quarterback last year, Steve Coulter, who uh, is overcoming a thumb injury at this time, uh, Brian Swisher, by the way, caught three passes last year, but it was Eastern Michigan that beat Marshall last year 7-3 on a late touchdown. And they're giving uh, the herd some fits in this one. Just missed on the measurement. Boy, what a down this would be right here if the herd could hold here. Third and less than a yard. Football is at the Eastern Michigan 48. Eastern Michigan became a member of the Mid-American Conference in 1971. Big play, needing less than a yard. Powell is wide to the right. Single setback. Gadash, plenty of room, dives to about the 45 for the first down. Jerry Gadash, a senior 200-pounder, dropped by Mike Copenhaver. You know, Wade Marshall is eighth in a rushing defense in the nation and first in the Southern Conference, allowing 44 yards a game, and they've forced eight turnovers so far this year. And uh, this is very uncharacteristic of them, uh, letting this, you know, Huron team just run at will here, like they're doing. First down with the football at the 46 of the herd. Marshall leading only 7-3 now. 7-3 ball game. Herd protecting a slim lead. A little delay to Vernon with great speed, and again, he breaks it. Down to about the 30-yard line before he is finally tripped up. Mike Copenhaver, last year's top tackler, and Leon Sims. 
And uh, these running backs just ripping holes right through that uh, Marshall front defense. Just gigantic goals, and you can see just uh, all they're doing is just sprinting out there in the secondary, and that's the fourth first down now for the Urons. They keep going over that right side, too, and that's that 275-pound senior tackle, Bob Smith, number 50, and uh, a freshman, 235-pounder. Try the left side, and not as much success. Jerry Gadash trying to get to about the 25-yard line, Gadash number 36. And so that'll bring up a second down. Second and about six for Eastern Michigan at the, uh, we'll call it the 25-yard line of Marshall. Eye formation, Gaydash and Vernon. Vernon's the deep back in the eye. Powell's to the right. And I believe that's Simpson to the left. There's the deep back, Darren Vernon. But uh, again, that defense that time tightened up. <laughs> they sure did. And right in there among them all was 59 Brian Mays. Did a super job. Number 71, uh, Borman checks in. What's Brian Mays say, Howdy, right here? And they also couldn't get, you couldn't see it from up here, but also I think it was 89 was in there, and we all know who that is, John Logan. Now it is third down. Needing about uh, four yards at the 23-yard line of the herd. Third down. Eastern Michigan threatening again. And it's Gordon. He's going to be dropped short of the first down. Robert Gordon. Again, a big defensive play, and we may see another field goal attempt. Tony Lelly leading the charge, a senior out of Weirton, number 48. Well, the defense come up that time, and has said no, and let's see what now they're going to do. They're going to set up a field goal attempt, Wade, looks like at about the 28-yard uh, line, and it looks like it's about straight on. Mario Ferretti is one for one on field goals. He booted a 21-yarder earlier in this quarter. As we said, uh, he's the uh, soccer-style kicker. Two years at uh, Northern Michigan University, he had quite a record. He hit on 58 of 59 extra points and 16 of 21 the field goals including a 49-yarder, so he's got the range. This is the young man who was born in the Dominican Republic, Mario Ferretti, and it looks like about a 38-yard attempt. A bobble the snap. That's a big break for the herd. <laughs> and so the field goal attempt, of course, backfires as Marty Palazzetti breaks through. And that's uh, a real defensive spark for the herd. It sure is. And that gives the uh, people across the way reason to stand up and cheer all the green shirts across the way in the crowd. And boy, the band even loves it. And now that's exactly what Marshall's characteristic of saying no. Now you're going to look at this. It's really not a good snap. He kind of bobbles it there. And, and then it's just, hey, let me get out of here. But Marty says, no way, baby. You're going to meet the carpet. And that's exactly what he did. Bob uh, Hirschman bobbled the snap. He's a, a junior who does the punting and now it's Marshall. First down. Big break. Let's see if that will get the herd on track now offensively uh, after a sensational start. Marshall leading 7-3 late now in the first period. Fodor with time. Swisher midfield. 45. Swisher finally dragged down around the 32-yard line of Eastern Michigan by Jerry Clayton. Brian Swisher out of Sistersville, a junior, 140-pound speedster, ninth reception this year. He has two touchdowns. He's been averaging about 16 yards a reception. There he is, the exciting Brian Swisher. Well, they call him the Spurfs here at Fairfield. Now, you're going to see, I hope you get to see this. Brian's going to put a move right there on Tom Kiefer, the secondary back, and out in the clear he goes. And another great reception, very characteristic of uh, Fodor to Swisher. First and 10 for Marshall with a little over a minute to go in the first quarter and leading only 7-3. Hines to the left and Abercrombie in the slot and maybe too much time here by Carl Folder. That's going to cost the herd. Five-yard penalty for the uh, delay of game as Brian Swisher checks back in offensively. 
That defensive wall uh, for Eastern Michigan, 266 pounds, 215, 218, 200, 225. Here's first and 15 back at the 36 of Eastern Michigan. Fodor over the middle. Lewis, great reception in traffic at the 25-yard line. Tim Lewis, who uh, caught the touchdown pass earlier, dropped by Anthony Fields, a sophomore out of Detroit. Tim Lewis now his 13th reception of the year. Here's his seventh out of 10 for the uh, football game. Tim just comes out, runs that very familiar pattern, and he's got great hands. He knows where the ball's going to be. And uh, they're going to drive the secondary nuts here in this game if they, they don't pull up their straps and say no. Tim Lewis last week took a 51-yard touchdown pass from Fodor. Closing seconds of the first period. Fodor on second and short yardage. Ball deflected and almost intercepted. A good pass rush. That's all it was, Wade. Just good defensive work by the Eurons. And I guess that, uh, you know, once in a while that's going to happen, but... They're going to have a Dickens of a time containing this man number 10. That will bring up a third down for Marshall. Coach Stan Parrish, he has his herd unbeaten, but struggling against uh, an improved Eastern Michigan team. Swisher to the left, Abercrombie in the slot, Lewis to the right. Split the backfield. Third, three, 24-yard line of Eastern Michigan. Boulder under pressure over the middle. Tim Lewis inside the 10. And this young man out of Clarksburg continues to pull down these passes. What a combination of Boulder and Lewis. And you know that uh, Stan Parrish is delighted to see these two work together. Well, here's 8 out of 11. And you see, well, you can't see it. But Tim just comes out of that tight end spot at the 11-yard line and another super reception. And they've got another first down. And so the aerial circus bogged down uh, on the last series picking up uh, momentum now that's the end of the first quarter on a great night for football clear skies temperatures in the 60s marshall seven eastern michigan university three will be back for the second quarter after this message Who can resist a Mr. Donut Donut? With that delicious taste that melts in your mouth. Light, fluffy fillings. Lots of flavors to choose from or old-fashioned honey dipped. You need a treat that satisfies and Mr. Donut comes through. You can even get great homemade tasting cookies, specialty baked goods, biscuits, sausage, and ice cold milk. Take home a box of smidgets for nibbling or a dozen of your favorite delights at Mr. Donut, corner of Route 60 and East Pea Ridge Road in Barbersville. If money is the only thing between you and a college education, then you have a good reason to come over to First Bank of Cerrito. Getting a good education can be very expensive, but having that education is well worth it. That's why First Bank is making student loans. Stop by and pick up your student loan application today. Our loan program applies to out-of-state schools, too. Money for your education. It's another good reason to come over to First Bank. First Bank of Cerrito. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Fairfield Stadium. Wade Ute with Mike Todd and George Connolly on the sidelines. And again, everyone at Channel 61 delighted to be part of Marshall football. The Herd in its third straight home game, trying to make it 3-0 and set the stage for not only the biggest game of the year, but one of the biggest games uh, in the history of uh, Marshall football. That would be next week in the Southern Conference opener against one of the powers in the Southern Conference, the Paladins from Furman. And right now it's going to be First and goal to go. The football is at the 10-yard line, and uh, Carl Fodor continues to put on quite an aerial display. He does. Eight out of 11 in the first quarter. Marshall had six first downs in the first quarter to Eastern Michigan's four. Robert Gordon, likewise, was two out of four from the air. From the 10-yard line, first down, Fodor sets him up. Swisher, Abercrombie to the left. Lewis to the right. McCoy and Surratt in the backfield. Forder rolling left. Throws to the end zone. Almost intercepted. That one was almost picked off. Looking for Abercrombie. I believe that was Fields who almost picked it off. Number 48. Well, he drew quite a crowd over there in the corner. They call it the, well, they call it the coffin corner over there. <laughs> I think it's called. But, uh, well, it, it was just good defense. That's all it was. 
Football back at the 10-yard line, and the herd, I think, got a break that time as Brian Swisher checks out, replaced by Billy Hines. Hines to the left, Lewis to the right. Surratt and McCoy, the running backs, Abercrombie in the slot on the left. This is second down from the 10-yard line. Boulder checking that defensive alignment straight back this time. He has time to the end zone, deflected, and I believe this time it is intercepted. Number 47, uh, that is Matt Finley, who's all over the place, and I believe a flag was also dropped. There is. There's a flag there, and Abercrombie, I think, was the intended receiver, and, well, we're going to have some interference. And it could be a big break for the herd. It sure will be. But that Matt Finley, he's all over the place. He's the sophomore who uh, last week had a whole season in one game or two weeks ago. But a big break for Marshall here. Interference against the Hurons. Pass interference. I don't know if we can see it or not, Wade, but here's Carl back in the pocket, and you can see right there at the last second, Danny had his eyes at the ball. I think he got shoved right at the goal line. They're marking it at the two-yard line. It is first and goal with the two. Early in the second quarter, Marshall leading 7-3, and Eastern Michigan giving uh, the herd all they can handle right now. In that first quarter, Marshall had the ball for seven minutes, Eastern Michigan for uh, eight minutes. Barakas and Manos, uh, I believe, giving uh, Marshall a little bit more mm -hmm. blocking uh, offensively. McCoy, the freshman, tries the right side. We mentioned last week, uh, if you uh, followed the herd, that uh, Stan Parrish on the uh, short yardage at times has brought in a couple of linemen as blocking backs. They're checking back out. Uh, we're seeing that uh, the regular backs are checking back in. Robert Surratt, number five, the tailback. McCoy's the fullback. Surratt behind him, the tailback. Swisher also in the backfield, number 22. A little bit of a mix-up here, and let's see. Marshall's going to save a penalty and take a timeout. There's a timeout here early in the second quarter at Fairfield. As we said, a great fall night for football. Marshall 7, Eastern Michigan University 3. Be back in a moment. Action of Thundering Herd Football. Just in time for the start of football season, Wilkes is offering for a limited time only a $100 discount on this remote control 25-inch RCA color tracks. Space Age technology and distinctive cabinet design are yours in all RCA sets. Also see Wilkes for the latest in RCA video recorders. With over 27 years in the service business, you know you can expect top quality from Wilkes TV sales and service. If you don't have money to burn and winter's cold is your concern. Cook's Farm Center helps you keep what you earn. Save your bucks on a bus stove. Tired of high heating costs? Buck Stoves can save you up to 80% on home heating bills. Don't turn your thermostat down when heating costs get too high. Turn it off and let an efficient Buck Stove keep you warm and cozy. Cook's Farm Center. Field Stadium now as the herd following the timeout. Second down, goal to go from the two-yard line. McCoy, the freshman at fullback. Robert Surratt, number five, the senior tailback. And uh, again, some confusion. I don't believe uh, the officials were ready that time. No, so. uh, no, we had the referee. He was out of the uh, flats we'll, that time. We'll penalize him for delay again. That's right. Uh, Eastern Michigan, in case you're not familiar, located in, as we said, Ypsilanti, about 40 miles from downtown Detroit, 20 miles from uh, the uh, Detroit Metropolitan Airport. All right at the goal line, Carl Folder. Well, they're taking a long look here, no signal. I assume he's just short here, Mike. He's probably outside the door on the doormat trying to get in, but uh, everybody was in tight that time, and Carl just kept the football. Here's a great shot right on this line of scrimmage, and Carl just going right over the guard. And we know who number 55 is, Juan. Juan Stout. So he's just inches away now. It will be third and goal. Look at that line dig in. Folder setting them up now. McCoy and Surratt. Third and inches, diving, Folder. Touchdown, Marshall. Carl Folder, his second touchdown of the year. 
He just dives off that right side. And the herd, a big touchdown. They needed that one. That gives them a little bit of breathing room now. It's 13 to 8, Marshall. Well, all he had to do was break the plane, and that he did. He hit the goal line, and then was shoved back. But as we all know, he broke the plane. And now Scott Latulip will be here to add the extra. And they're 13-3. Right side of that line, Juan Stout, Steve Staley, Rob Bowers. There he is. Wasn't easy. No. <laughs> Here's Scott Latulip now, trying to keep that streak alive now. He's hit on 70, 37 in a row now. Let's see if it's going to be 38. It's good. There's a timeout on the field now, a Marshall touchdown. Have a flag, I think, though. It'll probably be assessed on the kickoff, though. I would think. See what they do, though. Referee's talking to Bill Hindus, and they'll probably... Just do it on the kickoff, guys. That's what we'll do. So we've got a timeout. Marshall 14, Eastern Michigan 3. Be back for the kickoff in just a moment. Some people advertise USDA Choice Meat, but at Layman's Custom Meats, USDA Choice is all they sell. Vincent Layman Jr. uses his 20 years experience to cut meat the way you want. Layman's also has great A poultry and pork, and don't forget our convenient deli. And August 31st begins Layman's anniversary sale. The first 50 purchases of bluegrass 12-ounce hot dogs receives an additional pack free. Make sure you register to win a free USDA Choice hindquarter to be given away October 15th. So for USDA Choice Meat, see Layman Custom Meats, 2800 Winchester Avenue, at Hi, my name's Heidi. Welcome to Happy Living Home. Mom and Dad are busy right now, so let me show you around. Dad says we sell only quality homes like Holly Park, Nashville, and Commodore. I think they're pretty, but Mom and Dad can tell you all about that important stuff like warranties. Come and see us anytime. If I'm doing my homework, Mom and Dad will show you around. Bye now. Happy Living Homes, Route 60, two miles west of the Huntington Mall. I could have said that. And wait, as you and Mike have said, it has been an Eastern passing game or a running game for Eastern Michigan. And it has been the passing of Carl Forder that has carried the Marshall Big Green in. But down here, a big break on the 15-yard holding penalty and pass interference, which had led to the Marshall second touchdown. And now a big lead. Back upstairs. Thank you very, very much, uh, George. And... Uh... That penalty assessed on the kickoff. That means uh, Marshall will be uh, kicking that football from the 45-yard line. We also know there's a new rule in college football that if you kick that football out of the end zone and don't allow a possibility of a return, it's brought out to the 30-yard line. So we'll see what uh, Scott Latouf will do. He could almost kick a field goal from here. <laughs> With his ability, it wouldn't surprise me, but he's got great accuracy. I they wouldn't be surprised he puts it on the goal line from here. Carl Porter has passed for a touchdown. He's run for a touchdown. And the herd leading 14-3. A little bit closer than that score would indicate, though. They've had to battle this Eastern Michigan team. He's going to put it in the end zone, but not out of it. And uh, as long as he doesn't kick it out of it, it'll be brought out to the 20. That's a perfect kick for Latula. Yes, it was. It was right back there in the middle of the end zone. And they will bring it back to the 20. And the Hurons now, who... We know we're one and 11 last year. They have had their troubles, and they're going to try and see if they can come back here on the Marshall Thundering Herd. Well, Eastern Michigan hasn't had a winning season since 1977. Uh, in 78, they were three and seven. Since then, they've gone two eight and one, one and nine, over oh, 11, one nine and one, and one and ten. And uh, currently trying to end the 11-game losing streak in that tough Mid-American Conference under Coach Jim Harkema. is bringing in a lot of new players, and uh, they have looked good offensively, but. Uh, Marshall fired up under new coach Stan Parrish trying to make it 3-0 under the aerial display, of course, led by Carl Porter as Gary Patton, uh, the good-looking freshman tailback, comes out to about the 30-yard line. He's from Lorraine, Ohio, and uh, he averaged 10 yards a carry last week. Well, that time he went right through Brett uh, Peters' mark and also Brian Bitzer, the offensive guard. They open up another significant hole there, and that's very, uh, I think... Uh, as we say in the first, that's exactly what happened in the first quarter, and Marshall's going to have to put it into that right now. Great offensive work by that line. Second down, about a yard needed for an Eastern Michigan first down. They have moved the ball offensively. That's the quarterback. First down and more. Robert Gordon dives straight ahead across the 35. 
Gordon is a junior from Detroit. Limited duty, but uh, he's been the backup uh, the last two years. Brian Mays, a senior from Ohio, walk on in 1982, dropping uh, Robert Gordon. They're marking the football at the 37 yard line. The first down for the Hurons, who we have said have moved the ball very well, especially on the ground against uh, Marshall. Her with a five man front. Little bootleg here by Gordon. That pass complete near midfield to Steve Knopf's number 86. He's a freshman who led uh, Eastern Michigan in receptions in the opening game with three. He's 6'4", 218 pounds. That little bootleg you talked about, Wade, did nothing more than give number 86 the tight end. Steve Knopf's time enough to get out of his spot over there on the line of scrimmage and sprint out and uh, just take the uh, ball from from uh, the right flank of the pocket there. Good play. First and 10, 48-yard line. Two receivers wide to the left, and that puts Powell in motion. To the tailback, that's Patton. Patton across the 50 to the 47. Garfield Lewis, the junior, the weak cornerback out of Lexington, Virginia, who has six solo tackles through the first two games, making the stop. Wade, I think you talked about the weather tonight. This is about the best night I think we could ever have for a football game. The temperature around 63, I think. Beautiful night, not a cloud in the sky hardly. Second down, second and four at the 47-yard uh, line of the herd. Gordon with plenty of time. Scrambling, throwing, and it goes incomplete. He had the time but couldn't find the receiver. So credit that the secondary with the Sims and Gerald and Copenhaver and Garfield Lewis back there. Robert Gordon completed only five of 18. I guess he was a little nervous in that uh, start last in the opener, but uh, he's going to have to improve passing-wise. But uh, as we said, the running game has been the strong point for Eastern Michigan. And so a third down, important play for the Hurons. Still early in the second period and trailing 14-3 now. Here's third, needing about four from the 47-yard line of the herd. A little delay, and Gary Patton is short of the first down. That defensive ball again doing a job. James Wines, number 93, is <laughs> a senior. Whoa. Well, the crowd love that one. And for the third straight home game, another fine crowd. Not quite uh, the size of the first two, but uh, I'll guarantee you, if Marsha wins this one, watch out next week. This place is going to be standing room only. I think the student body across the way loved that last uh, defensive set. They got a standing ovation. The defense did as they came off of the field. For the fourth and three, here's the punt. Bob Hirschman. He had uh, nine punts, averaging 41, so he's a terrific kicker. Oh. What a tremendous Woo. high deep spiral. Man, that's as good as we see in the NFL, and maybe better. <laughs> Beautiful pump, but it goes out of everything, the end zone, and almost into the seats. But that young man, a junior, Bob Hirschman, I can see why uh, he averaged 41 yards a punt last week. First down, Marshall now leading 14-3. Ten minutes plus to go, second quarter, and the Marshall Band striking up a tune. Well, Carl Fodor is 8 out of 11 here in the first half uh, through the year. And again, he puts his, uh, they call him the Spurf. So there's Abercrombie and uh, Swisher out on the right side. This is Surratt trying to find some running room. And uh, he sort of dances off the left side and wiggles his way up for a couple yards, maybe three, four yards near the 24-yard line. Surratt in the opening game uh, led uh, Marshall's ground attack, but uh, last week held to 11 yards. Didn't run as often, Mike McCoy uh, really did most of the work in the backfield. Robert's very talented, senior. He can catch that football, too. Came into this game with a uh, 3.7 average per run. Second down and about uh, six needed for uh, Marshall first down. Football at the 24. That's Lewis. Mr. Reliable up around the 34-yard line. Folder to Lewis. What a combination. Jerry Clayton greeting Tim Lewis. Tim uh, in the first quarter caught a touchdown pass. He is exciting. 
What's Carl? Now, he knows exactly who, look at it, not a, not a bit of uh, tentative uh, play on his part at all. Just let it out there, and Tim was ready to catch it. Brian Swisher checks in, replacing <laughs> Billy Hines. Abercrombie and Swisher to the right. Again, back to that uh, I formation with McCoy and Surratt, the running backs. Marshall facing a first down at its own 34. Surratt finds some running room and moves up to about the 38-yard line. Wait, I don't know if you have mentioned it tonight or not, but Surratt is uh, leading the thundering herd in rushing with 84 yards and has the touchdown to his credit, as you know. He's the guy that takes the pressure off of the receivers. Second down for the herd. Ball is marked at the 39. Second and about five. Hines to the right. Abercrombie's in the slot. Split the backs. Boulder straight back. It's going to come out of the pocket. Tim Lewis in traffic and a sensational kick. <laughs> Big league all the way. Jim Durham among others. The timing was perfect, but just a great play by Tim Lewis. It sure was. The number 38 was right there. Jimmy Durham, as you said, Wade, was right on him like glue. And uh, you got to give Carl Fodor credit because he's the guy that's coming out of the pocket. He's keeping his concentration, and he knows exactly who he's going to throw to. And he just very, very... Uh... Now, let's take a look at the uh, defensive coverage here again. Look at this now. There, you see it. Every What a crowd he drew that time. And Tim just went right in the middle of the crowd, gets the first down. We had the flag, as you saw. Tim Lewis just gets better and better with each game. First down with the football at the 45-yard line. We've got a new tailback, uh, Tim Bristow, number 23, an exciting sophomore out of Randall, North Carolina. Lewis to the right this time. There he is, Bristow. He has good speed, tries the middle, gets a few yards. Tim Bristow, last week uh, carried five times for 22 yards, averaged a four and a half yards. A sophomore, 5'11", 170. Spent a year at the Fort Union Military Academy. Well, Tim got in and got his feet wet. That's good for Timmy. He's out of Randleman, North Carolina. You know where that's at? That's near Mayberry. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I don't know where it's at. It sounds like it ought to be. In the Tar Heel State. Fodor set to go on second down, needing about seven. Great protection over the middle. Tim Lewis again in traffic. Double teamed as you would expect. And despite the double coverage, Tim Lewis is putting on a tremendous show. The football's down around the 20. Mike Skyver hit him. But Tim Lewis is just nothing short of sensational tonight. I think that's the greatest adjective you could come up with, Wade. He is drawing a crowd, and uh, with that uh, two or three people, Carl's coming back again. He knows Tim is a good receiver, and he's out in the flats out there. One and two guys, here comes number three to knock him down. But he's got it at the Marshall's ninth first down. First down, Marshall knocking in the door at the Hurons 21. The aerial display, the Stan Parrish aerial circus really looking impressive at the moment. Border to the end zone! Knocked away Ooh. at the last moment. Matt Finley knocked it away from Brian Swisher. Finley, as we said, is the super defensive linebacker who is all over the place, and he saved a touchdown. Here's just simply good uh, defensive coverage now. Carl goes the other way. And uh, he's looking, as you see, Swisher in the end zone, but you saw the hand come in there. Nice play. And uh, we have a second and 10. Ball at the 21-yard line. McCoy and Surratt behind Fodor. Over the middle again. Incomplete. Looking, I believe, for Billy Hines. Hines uh, on the uh, goal line. We're seeing... Uh, Pretty good coverage at the moment by the Hurons. Mike Skyver, among others, defending back there. Now you're going to see Carl take a shot here for number 51 and number 70. After the ball was thrown, well, you didn't get to see a lot of it, but he did get smacked pretty good. And that's one of the reasons why the ball was overthrown. Now the best thing against that pass is the rush, and uh, they put a little pressure that time on Carl Folder. And so it becomes a third down at the 21-yard line at Eastern Michigan, third and 10 for Marshall. Surratt 
for a couple yards and then pushed back. He gets to about the 18-yard line. Now it'll be fourth down, and we'll see if uh, Scott Latuip will enter the game. And he will, number four. This young man will try a field goal for the herd. Scott, uh, this year, three of four on field goals. He is hit from 22, 35, and 28 yards. Last week had two field goals against Moorhead from 28 and 35 yards out. Scott Latulip uh, for his career, and it's been a great one, 24 of 33 field goals, as long as 50. This one uh, from the 27, a 37-yard attempt. This would be his longest of the season if successful. Fourth down, kick is up. Oh, he's got the distance. It is <laughs> good. 37 yards for Scott Latulip. He is now on field goals this season, four of five. That's his longest, the 37-yarder. Marshall leads Eastern Michigan 17-3. We'll be back with a Scott Latulip kickoff in a moment. We know your savings are very important to you. That's reason enough for them to be important to First Bank. At First Bank, we'll go the extra distance to make sure your savings and investment accounts earn a fair rate while we guarantee their safety. So if you have a certificate that's about to mature, we have investment options that will get you the most for your money. Good service and high interest. Two good reasons to come on over to First Bank. First Bank of Cerrito, member FDIC. What's Freebie up to now? He's here to announce the free shrimp offer. When you order our six-piece shrimp dinner, now with larger shrimp, you get two extra shrimp as a bonus. And they're absolutely free. We'll just add them to your six-piece shrimp dinner. So come on in and get two of our new larger shrimp free when you buy our six-piece shrimp dinner at Long John Silver's. Welcome back again to Fairfield Stadium. Wade Ute, Mike Todd, George Connolly, and spotter Brent Cunningham here in what has turned out to be another great evening of Stan Parrish football and uh, led by Carl Folder in the defense. You know, they were pushed around for the first quarter especially, but still, they have not weakened. They have not allowed a touchdown yet, Mike. Yeah, they've been pushed around a little bit, but they did some pushing themselves here in the last little while. <laughs> Boy, you got to like this little guy, number four, Scott Latulip. What a great weapon he is to come off of the bench. Closing in on the six-minute mark of the first half as Scott Latulip booms it to Patton. Patton, a freshman speedster. Let's see what he does. Shakes off one tackler, another tackler. Good effort as he's dropped, though, short of the 20. Uh, among others, uh, we saw Garfield Lewis in there. Jim Marshall was in there defending. It was simply a good uh, good return. I thought uh, Brian Mays had a real good shot at him, but uh, he kind of eluded him, and uh, they've got a uh, fairly good position here. Not, not bad, so let's see what they can do about it. Football at the Hurons 19. Single setback. Gordon is the quarterback. This is Gaydash up the middle. And he drives forward to about the 26-yard line. Marty Palazzetti. Defensively, uh, again, that uh, defensive unit including uh, Tony Lelly, Jeff Borman, Ethan Fields, James Wines, Marty Palazzetti. We're seeing John Segley and Brian Mays at linebacker with John Logan. Sims, Gerald, Copenhaver, Lewis to secondary. Second down, needing about uh, three for a first down. Football at the 26-yard line of Eastern Michigan University. Vernon trying to get a first down. That's the tailback, Darren Vernon. That's one guy they don't want to let loose. He can play a fly. He's from Hamilton, Ontario. He was a defensive back in 1983. We're getting a measurement right now. We want to be sure and remind our viewers to be with us again next Saturday night at 10 o'clock. It'll be Marshall against uh, Furman University, Southern Conference opener. 
fourth straight home game, and as we said earlier, we would advise everyone viewing, if you're interested in coming out here to Fairfield Stadium, get your tickets early in the week because that is shaping up as the game. Well, it's the one that Marshall wants to have. The initial win in the conference, and they I'm sure the expectations are up, and everybody's wondering, can they do it in the conference? They, you know, This is the one right now they've got to, of course, get under the belt. Well, as we said, they cannot look past Eastern Michigan University to next week's game, and maybe in the first quarter they were, as that, but now you can see that defense really tightening up. Here's a first down play as Darren Vernon really gets a pounding, trying to get out to the 35. He doesn't make it. Number eight uh, is Garfield Lewis. Brian Mays, number 59 was right there too. There's one of the rare times they've thrown the football. They've only thrown it uh, uh, seven times in the football game for four completions, but uh, it does kind of keep you off balance from time to time when you're not expecting it. Second down. Second and six for Eastern Michigan from its 33-yard line. The tailback again is Vernon twisting and turning, spun around, as Leon Sims greeting Darren Vernon and not letting him break away. That's short of a first down. It'll bring up uh, third down. They've had a lot of third down plays tonight. Third and threes, third and fours, third and twos. It's a big key down for them. Third and three for Eastern Michigan. In the white with the dark green trim. Marshall, of course. The new uniforms, the green jerseys, the white pants. Matthews in motion, Gordon rolling, passing. That was almost intercepted, looking for Matthews. Boy, Brian Gerald picked that one off. He'd have been long gone. <laughs> yeah, been a 40-yard TD. A lot of pressure there on this young man. Brian's number 47. Brian Gerald, the walk-on, the freshman from Milton, and, of course, Mike McCoy, the freshman walk-on from Parkersburg. They uh, really got uh, the raves and notoriety after uh, their fine performance against Moorhead last week. You know, they were walk-ons, Wade. You were talking about that. And uh, they, they called Coach Parrish and said, hey, can we walk on? And he said, yeah, come on, Dan, and we'll let you try out, see how you do. And they're, they're both outstanding players from Parkersburg and Milton. Uh, the Greyhounds got a great program up there in Milton, and I guess uh, it just sure didn't hurt him any. Here's another super punt by Hirschman, who gets tremendous height and time. Garfield Lewis, uh, fair catch. This uh, young man, Bob Hirschman, is really a great punter. Got a lot of hang time, but I think that's the key to any good punter. You got to hang it up there, get some distance at the same time. Give that time for the defensive unit to get downfield and uh, to do exactly what happened there a moment ago. You don't want any run back. See, and that's exactly what happened. And uh, Marshall's got it on the 25. Late now here in the first half. Marshall led at the end of the first quarter 7 3, a touchdown pass to Tim Lewis. Uh, Eastern Michigan struck on a field goal by Mario Ferretti. And here in the second quarter, uh, Fodor has run for a touchdown, and Scott Latoup has booted a 37-yard field goal. Marshall lead uh, extended now to 17-3. This is Fodor, great protection, swing pass over the middle, and this is Tim Lewis, and Lewis out to the 32-yard line, and Tim is really compiling the yardage tonight. Well, that was the 20th time in the uh, ball game that uh, Fodor has thrown for his 13th reception here. Lewis is becoming rapidly now Carl's favorite receiver. You see there, just wide open. He has a knack for finding that vacant spot. Lewis entered uh, this game with 11 receptions. He had nine in the first game, and he's getting close to uh, that total in this one. It is now second and three for the herd from its 31-yard line, 3-11 remaining in the first half. Oh, <laughs> pass to Billy Hines near midfield about the 46-yard line, and Carl Folder makes it look so easy. He has just been absolutely brilliant here in the first half. Well, he's 14 out of 21, and I started to say a moment ago, now watch this, this is a, another long pass for another first down. Uh, incidentally, their 10th of the ball game, and you're going to see him catch that wide open out there. And what they're doing, they're lulling everybody to sleep with these four and five yard little passes, and then all of a sudden, somebody goes deep, either Swisher or possibly, in that in last case, you saw Hines. So he just keeps cranking them out. Marshall's passing attack has just been brilliant. It is first and 10, 46 yard line. <laughs> Diving catch, yes, oh. Tim Lewis again. Anything near Tim Lewis is going to be a reception. It's, it's super. Now I'll tell you something else. 
I don't know if you get a chance to see this. Robert Surratt was wide open at the 48-yard line, and Carl didn't even look at him. He looked. He looked for the number 19, the man that has become rapidly now. Look at this. You talk about Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. What a combination they're coming up to. What do you do for an encore? Last week, voter, 315 yards through the air and four touchdowns, and he is putting on a show in this one. We're only in the first half. 15 for 22. 22 completions is the single game mark, and he has put on some kind of aerial show in the first half. As uh, I believe Mike Barakas from uh, Charleston, 6'2", transfer from West Virginia University, got a little over anxious that time. Here he was, see, number 56, kind of jumped there just a little bit. Well, Mike's a little bit jittery. Is great chance to, to start a game, and he's putting on... Uh, Another outstanding performance. That's all right, Michael. Don't worry about it. Abercrombie and Surratt. Surratt's in the slot on the right side. McCoy is a single setback and yep. another flag. Something they heard, of course, concerned about the number of penalties. Uh, they were doing real well up until just uh, this particular series. They're starting to mount up a few here now. Well, there's two consecutive penalties, and this, this is what Coach Parrish didn't want to see. Now, we had a first and 15. And, of course, it's going to... Another five yards marching up the field here. Make it first and 20. <clears throat> Marshall has been called for 23 penalties for 201 yards in the first two games. That's too much. But uh, when you win the first two... <laughs> it's in the back of your mind, though. Voter, first and long... Looking that time for Abercrombie, and he was well covered, and uh, again, one of the few incomplete passes of this first half. Well, he sure drew a crowd that time. A little bit behind the, uh, the defense, but the ball was a little bit off target. Less than two minutes remaining in this first half. Marshall led uh, at the end of the quarter 7-3, but a touchdown and a field goal giving uh, the herd the insurance now of a 17 to 3 lead. They have some breathing room lead by 14. This is second and long. Protection over the middle. Oh, 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 Guess oh, what? Tim oh, Lewis. Oh. We're seeing what may turn out to be some sort of record-breaking performance by a receiver. Anthony Fields catching up with Tim Lewis, who has just simply done everything a receiver could possibly do in the first half. You know, Wade, I was thinking about it. You're going to look right here again. It's just another uh, reception from Fodor to, uh, of course, Tim Lewis. Look at that. Beautiful execution. But the thing about it is it was second and 20, and people no longer sit in Fairfield Stadium and say, hey, we can't do it. We're long yardage, and you know you get three or four yards. Now, with this execution of passing game they've got, two and 20 is nothing. Okay, they really spread them out this time. This is truly a spread formation on third down and a yard needed in a single setback, and Carl Fodor decides to keep the football, and looks like he's got a first down. <laughs> I told you. Carl has uh, run for a couple touchdowns this year. One just a minute ago. There's the first down. His touchdown uh, in the second quarter earlier, giving Marshall a 14-3 lead. It's now 17-3. Carl Fodor, 6'1", 170-pounder, out of Weirton. From the 26-yard oh, line, throwing to the end zone, towards Lewis, knocked away. Look at Amber Crumby. He was wide open as Clayton defending. You can't blame Fodor, though, to throw no, to Lewis. No, not at all. And, uh, I don't think you're going to get to see it, but Carl, rather Abercrombie, was wide open. The seam over there, but here's the, the, the man that has had such a great first half, and you got to throw to him. Second down, second and 10, back at the Eastern Michigan 26. Still plenty of time to get a couple more passes off. Well, from a few times, Carl Fodor has been caught, sacked, and maybe a fumble as uh, Mark Peterson, a junior, junior college transfer, catching up with the Carl Fodor. Penalty was dropped also. Entering this game, uh, again, uh, if you joined us late, uh, Carl Fodor in two games, 38 
completions for 574 yards and seven touchdowns. And he has again put on quite an aerial display here in the first half and those uh, impressive figures are mounting up. Well, the flag was thrown back at the 32-yard uh, line. And uh, penalty is declined, as you may have heard. So uh, in the closing seconds now of the first half, it becomes third down. Third and long. And here's Fodor getting great protection again and throwing deep. Looking for Brian Swisher. He was double covered in the corner at about the two-yard line. Well covered, and the ball goes incomplete. Well, the ball is flying that time. That ball was in the air about 43 yards. And now we're going to see guessing. Look at this. And this one's going to be pretty good distance, but here's the play again. You see the uh, double coverage there, um, that uh, almost triple coverage that uh, Wade was talking about. Here we go. A 50-yard field goal attempt coming up by Scott LaTulip. Scott LaTulip, his longest 50 yards against William & Mary last year. This one will be spotted at the 40, so it's going to be a 50-yard attempt by LaTulip. It is going to be no good. It is a little bit short, and it looked like it was under the crossbars to the left. That's all right. Scott LaTulip has just been <laughs> sensational. That's only his uh, second miss of the season. You'll be thinking about that after a while. Say, I could have had it. Could have had it. So with just seconds remaining in the uh, first half, and Marshall leading 17-3. We'll see what the Eurons will do. They're going to stay on the ground. Darren Vernon to about the 40-yard line. That could be the last play in the first half. A timeout will save it here. Four seconds remaining before halftime. And uh, again, what can you say, Mike? Uh, Carl Folders throwing, Tim Lewis uh, receiving. Again, that Marshall defense uh, doing its thing. And you know, with that uh, also, Wade, you, you talk about last week we had McCoy and Gerald doing their thing. So each week it's something different. In a few seconds, as soon as this uh, first half ends, we'll be switching back to the sidelines and we'll hear from George Conley. We're glad George is feeling better this week. Yeah, his ankle's a whole lot better than it had been. He really couldn't even put, a, put his weight down on it. He was on crutches for about four or five days, and George is back with us now down on the sidelines, and he'll do a report here in just a moment or so. You almost forget about Marshall's running game, the way uh, Carl Folder's been throwing the ball, but... Uh, Though they haven't really run the ball very often, uh, you never know. You got Bristow, Surratt, and McCoy. We may see more of them in the second half with the ball on the ground, but Fodor's done it all through the air. Final seconds of the first half. 17-3. Heard. Gordon, the junior, Robert Gordon. He's going to throw a sideline pass and almost intercepted, looked for <laughs> Matthews, closest to it was Garfield Lewis. That's the end of the first half, an impressive aerial display. Carl Folder and Tim Lewis highlighting it. 17-3, Marshall has the lead, and we've got a sideline report coming up now from our man there, George Conley. Okay, with that, uh, it was a good first half, no doubt about it, Wade. And let's uh, be back with more here to begin the second half in a minute. And we'll be back right after you see this. Name a nationally known brand of redwood stain that's priced low every day at Hex. A quality redwood stain that goes on smooth, gives you rustic redwood looks, and is priced every day at just $2.97 a gallon. Introducing Glidden Redwood Stain at Hex. Highlight all types of natural wood to a deep, rich redwood color. And the latex formula means easy application and soap and water cleanup. Glidden Latex Redwood Stain, priced at just $2.97 a gallon, every day at Hex. Every second counts. The all-new comedy game show brings you funny man host Bill Rafferty. We all remember that famous scene in the Japanese movie Godzilla where they go, mm, Godzilla. <laughs> Sharp-witted contestants. I married a young lady named Melody. Keeps me humming. <laughs> a challenging new game. Eat it or wear it. 
answer monster or sushi. Plus, fabulous prizes every day on every second counts. Halftime real quickly with Coach Jim Harkema of the Hurons in the Eastern Michigan. Jim, tough call on the interference here in the end zone. Well, I thought it was very difficult. I, I disagree with them because our guy hit the ball, and then we got the, the catch. Would have, that's a seven-point lead, and you're talking about a change round. But we got to execute our kicking game. we got to also execute uh, when we get down to the goal line. We've moved the football. They put it in, we have it, we're going to have to do it. Jim, you moved the football real well, offensively running the game. I know you came up with a couple of passes. It opened it up a little bit, but your angle blocking on the linebacking is doing a great job of opening that hole. Well, we feel we're moving the football. We just got to execute when we get down to the scoring zone. And if we do, we're still in this football game. We're looking forward to second That's half. right, Jimmy, and good luck to you. All right, Coach Jim Harkema of the Eastern Hurons. And now back up to Mike and Jim. Thank you very much, George. And as we said at halftime, it is Marshall 17, Eastern Michigan 3. We'll have more in just a moment. Since Lisa and I took this class in auto repair, oil changes, tune-ups, they're old hat. That's because I'm a nation-wise man. I mean, why pay someone when you can do it yourself? Dad! This week, 50,000 mile new premium brake shoes and pads for most domestic cars and light trucks are $2 off. New metallic disc pads for many newer domestic cars and light trucks are $3 off. Take the road to confidence nationwide, your low price good advice auto parts store. If money is the only thing between you and a college education, then you have a good reason to come over to First Bank of Cerrito. Getting a good education can be very expensive, but having that education is well worth it. That's why First Bank is making student loans. Stop by and pick up your student loan application today. Our loan program applies to out-of-state schools, too. Money for your education. It's another good reason to come over to First Bank. First Bank of Cerrito. Member FDIC. Find both teams back on the field for the second half kickoff. Marshall leading Eastern Michigan 17 to 3. And you can just sum it up by saying Marshall's first half was just simply simply something to see passing wise. They did it all, and Tim Lewis was a busy young man, uh, Mike Todd. Sure was. We'd like to mention tonight that tonight's uh, ball game brought your way by the First Bank of Cerrito, where you've got a good reason to come over to First Bank. Tim Lewis in the first half, what a performance. Ten receptions, 131 yards, and a touchdown. And Carl Folder, well, that's uh, 15 completions, 15 of 24 for 218 yards in that touchdown. And he did it all. And Marshall on the arm of Carl Folder and the receptions of Tim Lewis leading it. 17-3, Patton on the return for Eastern Michigan and Brian Mays greeting Patton. And it looks like this Marshall team is ready to go. That's exactly what the, the special teams coaches love to see, gang tackling, and that's what they did at the 15-yard line to get things started here. Marshall only six yards on the ground, but 218 yards through the air in the first half. Eastern Michigan, 99 yards on the ground, only 39 through the air. From the 19, Darren Vernon. He's the tailback. Vernon, in the first half, carried seven times for 41 yards. You know, we, we talked about the penalties uh, being significant. Uh, they were not in the first half. Marshall really cut them down. They only had three, and they were for 15 yards. And, of course, Michigan had four for 34, so they were not even significant in the first half. Marshall's defense giving up only three points in the first two quarters. Second down for Eastern Michigan. Leading five from the Hurons 24. Opening moments of the third period. Again, delighted you could be with us. That is Darren Vernon. He found a big hole off the right side, and let's see if he's got a first down. He's right up near that. Uh, another gigantic hole uh, opened up again, and uh, he could sure hit that hole quickly. That offensive front uh, for Eastern Michigan, uh, Dale Boone, the left tackle at 260, the left guard Teague 225, the center 230 is Bridge. 
On the right side, Brian Klaus, the uh, right guard is 235, and earlier we mentioned uh, the right tackle number 50, Mike Smith, at 275 pounds. So they like that right side of the offensive line to run. This is third and needing not much, and Jerry Gadash doesn't get much. <laughs> No, he did not. I don't even think he got up to the line of scrimmage, and they're really congratulating, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it is number 49, or 48, Tony Lelly, the uh, linebacker for the defensive end. And that really stopped him cold, and the crowd gets into this defense. Marshall has just allowed two touchdowns in two and a half games. Look at this. Whap! Oh, you talk about some good gang tackling now. An outstanding punter, Bob Hirschman, back. Inside is 15, and flag is being dropped everywhere. Flags all over the field. That'll cost uh, Euron's five. Hirschman, the punter, two punts in the uh, first half, averaging uh, 42 yards. Touchdowns for Marshall in the first half. Uh, Lewis, as we said, uh, 11 receptions, or rather 10 receptions, one of them a touchdown into the end zone three-yard pass. Boulder ran for one. Field goal, 37-yarder by Scott LaTulip, the 17 points for the herd. High snap, booming kick, tremendous hang time. Lewis at the 30-yard line. Another tremendous kick off the foot of a junior from Utica, Bob Hirschman. Well, he's getting those punts up in the air, and that's the second consecutive time it's happened to Garfield Lewis. He hasn't had a chance to even take a step with it. He's had to call the fair catch, and this time he does at the 30-yard line. So another super job by the punter. Entering this game, Lewis had returned uh, five punts for 33 yards. Hirschman's kick, 47 yards. Let's see if Carl Fodor can pick up where he left off. As he triggers the offense, he put on a tremendous display of passing. This is McCoy up the middle. Marshall's ground game really limited in the first half. As we said, only six yards. Surratt carried three times for 10 yards. That was about it. And, uh, you know, with that passing arm of Folder in the first half, you didn't need much of a ground game, did you? No, you didn't. He was uh, 15 for 24 officially in the first half for 218 yards. And can he do it in the second half? Let's wait and see. Second down, needing seven. 33-yard line of the herd early in the third quarter. Scrambling by Folder. Law pass, a dangerous one to throw. Almost intercepted at number 14. Robert Thompson oh. was thinking touchdown, but he's got to hold on first, and that's yes. a big break for the herd. You know, I'm not so sure that doggone it, he had that and just dropped it. I think he had possession, and, and let's look at it again now. All he did is just sit back and wait for the ball. It was a lame duck up in the air there. And here he gets right in front. See, he had the ball. And he was starting to run with it. And I'm not so sure he just didn't fumble the darn thing. But they called it an incompleted pass. And that would have put Eastern Michigan back in this game. They're only down by 17-3. Right. A break for Marshall. Let's see what the Fodor will do. He'll go with a draw play this time. McCoy on some power as he drives across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Well, they're going to have to uh, punt it away. And Mark Salmon will come in now. And only one man back to receive. Salmon's only had to punt one time in the first half. He boomed one 43 yards. Mike, 6'4", uh, 220 pounder. Line drive. We're going to get a return by Powell. Boy, he is pulled down about the 33-yard line. Good defensive work by the specialty team. Yeah, you know, the kids on the specialty teams really love that. They just love that. They call it the headhunters a lot of times, and uh, Todd Brown was the man that made that. And you're going to see Mark Salmon's kick, a nice uh, spiral-type kick. And here's Powell. There's running laterally, and there is, you see it. And uh, some good work by the specialty teams again. Eastern Michigan going back to work. Football at the Huron's 33-yard line. As we said, they score, and they're back in the game. It's 17-3. It's not over. Long count here. Gordon has gone all the way. That's a gate ash, and he's not going very far. He's the senior fullback. Brian Mays has done quite a job. He's been uh, working at linebackers along with John Segley over there, and he's a senior from Wintersville, Ohio. 
One of the uh, people there that really made first contact, Wade, was Alan Huff. He, he's one of the guys that stuck him pretty good, too. He's 6'4", 260. Not a little guy. He's coming back from the knee injury. He's out of Chester. Second and about eight. Gordon is rolling left, scrambling and running. Finally is caught around the ankles at about the 42-yard line by freshman Brian Gerald. Short of a first down, but he picked up some yardage. And it'll bring up now a third down. Everybody was covered in the secondary that time. And when he, when he, look at he's looking downfield. He says, well, I can't throw it. I'll just find a uh, line of scrimmage there and try to get over it and go all I can. So that's what happens when you scramble. And so it becomes third down, and again, an important third down. Eastern Michigan trying to maintain possession, needing two from its 42-yard line. Ten minutes to go. That will be close to a first down, and as they take a long look, I believe we've got a report from the sidelines with George Conley. Wade Marshall's outstanding linebacker, John Sagley, re-injured the ankle that was hurt the first game against West Virginia Tech, and we'll have no more action tonight. Back up stage. Thank you, George, and that means that Brian Mays will see a lot of action at the linebacker slot. Well, John's had a lot of bad luck. Let's hope he can get back soon. That was a first down a moment ago. First down, 45-yard line. Gordon throws to the outside. He's got gate ash. And he literally fights his way to about the midfield strike, tangled with Brian Gerald. Gate ash uh, can also catch that football. Had nine receptions uh, last season. Started the last two years. He's the fullback from Akron, Ohio, 200-pounder. His best game was a 61-yard effort against Ball State. It's second down and five at midfield. Eastern Michigan moving the football, eye formation. Matthews in the slot in motion on the left side, and they go to Darren Vernon. He'll get five as he goes straight up the middle. Up the middle, they went. Gordon threw that pass a moment ago for that reception. It was his fifth of the ball game in 10 attempts, and uh, that's a long way from 24. <laughs> Eastern Michigan has remained in striking distance of Marshall at 17-3. It is now a first down at the 45. Marshall's into the field. Plenty of time for Gordon throwing over the middle. And it's intercepted at, I believe, it's Copenhaver. At the 33-yard line, Mike Copenhaver, his second interception of the season. The senior, he played at Brook High School. Top tackler last year, and again, a very, very big play for that defense. And there's Mike just sitting back there waiting for the ball, and he had to jump up a little bit for it, but again, another uh, turnover for the Eurons, and they're going to have to, you know, stay away from this kind of stuff in the second half. First down, Marshall. Football now at the Herd, 34-yard line. Good fake. Folder throws over the middle, and that's going to be intercepted by number 12, Jerry Clayton. And Carl Fodor, after that sensational first half, he almost threw a touchdown pass earlier, and that one, of course, wasn't near anyone except Jerry Clayton. So he's uh, a little bit off uh, target now. He may have lost his concentration somewhat, I guess. He's 0-2 here in the second half, and, of course, now 15 for 26 in the ball game. Those things happened, but that one there was just right off target and right to that man that in all fairness to Carl he had to cool off his first half was about as hot as a firecracker he was a sizzler at quarterback in the first half as Eastern Michigan staying on the ground Gaydash met by linebacker John Logan coming across the 45 46 yard line now we've got a sideline report here's George Conley Wade, here at sideline and the man hobbling on scratches right now, the young gentleman from Miami, Florida, and the freshman sensation of the Marshall Thundering Herd, Daryl DeVoe. Daryl, I know you'd like to be out there. Yes, I would. I really would. Do you mind the red shirt freshman year even though it's an injury? No, I don't really mind it because, like I said before, you know, it helps me learn a lot. It helps me get ready for next year. All right, Daryl. Good luck to you in the future. Now back, Wade, up to us. As you could see, thank you, George, a long pass. Garfield Lewis almost came up with the interception. Gordon was scrambling all over the place. And uh, 
Gordon, of course, throwing deep. Let's watch it again here. Watch Marty Palazzetti. Look, come back here. <laughs> he puts the pressure on him, and Gordon just has to let it fly downfield. And Garfield, a super effort and a great value try, but just out of his fingertips. Bring it back to the Euron 46-yard line. Bring up third and seven. At secondary, under fire now on the herd side. And Gordon wants to throw again, and he's got plenty of time over the middle. Almost oh. intercepted, intended for Powell. I believe that was Brian Mays who almost came up with the interception. Brian uh, replacing the injured John Segley. Well, Give the Marshall secondary the credit here. That's right. And they get a good hand coming off of there one more time, and uh, they're turning the ball back over to uh, the Marshall offense, and now we'll see Garfield and uh, also Leon Sims to see what they can return back here. Bob Hirschman, who's really been hanging the football on these punts. Great coverage by uh, Marshall in that last series. This one's a rather short punt for him. Gets a favorable roll, though, and goes out of bounds, and it again turns out to be an excellent punt, pushing Marshall back to about the 17-yard line. So with a little over eight minutes to go here in the third quarter, Marshall having problems getting untracked offensively. It's defense again shining, leading Eastern Michigan University 17-3. The football being spotted at the 17-yard line. Well, let's see if Carl could get his composure back here. He's uh, been shaky the last couple of times out, and uh, they're putting Surratt out there on the flank, but I guarantee you he'll move back in there maybe. Huh? Nope, he's going to stay. First down call. Boater zeroing in. There he is, Robert Surratt. And that's the reason why. <laughs> he just dives forward. And he's very close to a first down. That play good for about 10 yards, and they'll take a long look. Robert uh, has caught a couple passes in this one. He has scored uh, one touchdown this season through the air. As you see, only one setback, and that's Mike McCoy. And all uh, Surratt does is come out, curl around to his left side, and it's another completion. One out of three now for Fodor here in the third quarter. Fodor uh, having uh, a few problems going deep, deciding to uh, bring it in with a short pattern over the middle, and... You zeroed in on Robert Surratt. Not quite the first down, but here it is. That's a first down. Carl Fodor doing quite a job. If you uh, joined us late in the first half, what an aerial display by Fodor. 15 of 24. He completed 15 passes for 218 yards and a touchdown. He did it all. And uh, Tim Lewis caught 10 of those uh, 15 passes. What more could you ask of a tight end? <clears throat> Dan Ross. <laughs> <laughs> here is first down for Marshall football at the 28 of the herd Marshall leads 17-3 7 minutes, a little over 7 minutes to go oh what a great diving catch by Highness, Billy Highness the senior from Huntington East High School he entered this game with 4 receptions averaging 11 yards a try makes a sensational diving catch up around the 40 yard line, we'll see where they mark it here again is Carl going back and he's got so many targets and look at here there's Bill Hines up there a lot of crowd around and uh, it's just simply incredible that uh, he can find so many people open a first down as Swisher comes wide to the right Abercrombie's in the slot Porter goes over the middle Abercrombie the midfield stripe finally run out of bounds around the 47 yard line and Carl Fodor is zeroing in again well he's three for five here in the third quarter up to 60 percent now another first down Jerry Clayton pushing Abercrombie out as Billy Hines replaces uh, Brian Swisher as they alternate at split end. Marshall's offensive line with Steve Wendt and Mike Barakas, Juan Stout, Steve Staley, Rob Bowers giving Fodor that added protection. First down at the 47. Fodor in the pocket, over the middle. And that was a little bit out of the reach, and uh, maybe in the first half, uh, Tim Lewis uh, would have caught that one because he caught everything near him, but that pass was off the mark. It was a little bit underthrown down around the uh, ankles, and uh, Tim still, I think, got his fingertips on it. There you look at him, the 6'2 senior, or junior. It'll be second down. There's number 10, Carl Folder, just a junior. 315 yards through the air last week. Boulder, plenty of time. 
Uh oh. And it's going to be intercepted. That's the second interception of this half. That is 38, Jim Durham. He's a senior. Pass intended for Lewis, intercepted by Durham. Penalty markers on the field. Penalty has been dropped. Let's watch it again. Watch the defense. Here the ball is intended for Tim Lewis, and uh, the defender just got right in front of him. He's still going to get some yards here. But we've got a flag right there, right around Surratt. A couple flags dropped around the 40-yard line. Urine's into the field. A little over six minutes to go, third quarter. Marshall leads 17-3. The interception, and now the penalty, pushing it back to about the 25. So Eastern Michigan will have the football, but uh, not a favorable field position. But uh, Carl Folder has cooled off and has allowed a couple interceptions. Officials call a timeout. So the pressure remains on that uh, secondary for the herd. Carl Folder, as we said, struggling here in the third quarter. And the Eastern Michigan offense, though, still hasn't been able to penetrate the secondary of the herd with Lewis and Copenhaver. Jarrell and Sims doing a great job. Vernon, and I believe that was Ethan Fields, the nose guard along with Brian Mays defensively. Can't say enough for Marshall's defense. Nope. You know, the Eurons, what they're doing, they're just running tackle to tackle and just trying to exploit those holes in there once in a while that open up. And then uh, out of a clear blue sky, Robert Gordon will come out and throw. He can throw the football. And they're going to have to contain him when he does. This is second and still long. He gets the time, and he finds a receiver. That's Steve Knopfs. That should be an Eastern Michigan first down. Knopfs, the uh, leading receiver in Eastern Michigan's only game, the loss to Youngstown State. He's only a freshman. He's a 218-pounder, stands 6'4". Now here again is Gordon's second reception in the third quarter. He's thrown four, but you can see he can throw the football and on target. Powell is wide to the left. Eastern Michigan out of the eye. Gaydash and Vernon have been doing the running. This is Gaydash. He's got speed and power. Shakes off one tackler. Goes all the way down to the 34-yard line. And you know, we have touched on this several times uh, without making a case of it. Garfield Lewis making the tackle. That if Eastern Michigan should score in this drive or... Here it is again. They're back in the game. Look at that. Great concentration and effort on that young man's part. And all the green shirts hanging on there and... He's just about to put uh, the Eurons back in the football game. They're on the Marshall 33-yard line, 34. Marshall leads by only two touchdowns and have had problems offensively here in the third period. Eastern Michigan has made quite a bit of adjustments defensively. There's the pitch. That is Vernon off the right side, and uh, he couldn't break it, but he does pick up some yardage as he gets to about the 29-yard line as he hammers his way, and... Eastern Michigan uh, seems like their suit is the running game. I think it is. They know that, and uh, but they, they, you know, they, as I said earlier, Robert Gordon can throw the football, and he's complementing the running game to the extent that uh, it's, it's keeping the drive sustained. And so it becomes a second and five, and the football is inside the Marshall 30. This is the tailback, Vernon. He bulls his way off that right side, getting close to the 25 and close to a first down. He'll be short of it. Garfield Lewis, uh, again, defensively, the junior from Lexington. Like the Jeff Warman there, too. I guess, Wade, we should credit the, uh, you know, the Euron offensive line, especially the right side. They've been doing a yeoman job all night long, and they're the ones making this drive go. This is third and two at the Marshall 26 with Simpson wide to the left. The eye formation. And the long count by Gordon. And the tailback off the left side. First down and more. Shakes off a tackler. Twist to the 15-yard line. Garfield Lewis brought him down. Darren Vernon, the tailback. He's a senior out of Hamilton, Ontario. 188-pound speedster. You're going to look at him go right over uh, right left guard. Ryan Klaus, the uh, lineman there that opened up that big hole. And it's another first down. He was switched from uh, defensive back to tailback last year.
Now they're marking the football inside the 10. Down to about the 8-yard line. Let's see what the call is here. Personal foul. And so with less than four minutes to go in the third quarter, Eastern Michigan knocking on the door, which would put them back in this football game. It's only 17 to three. High formation. This is go to go from the seven yard line. Darren Vernon dives inside the five, close to the four, Jerry Gadash correction. Gadash gets the call and goes inside the five. They really sustained their ground game. They've out uh, first down, Marshall, five to two here in the third quarter. And it's really, as you say, Wade, been on the ground, and they're down to the four now. And this is when it gets going tough. Gadash is in the backfield. Number 40 is now in the backfield. Paul Haddix. So a few changes offensively. I believe it's uh, Haddix and Gadash, the running backs. It's go to go from the four. Second down, Eastern Michigan. That is Gadash, and that time, that middle really was plugged up. It sure was, and uh, we, we all know who number 71 is. And uh, also, 71, we all know Jeff Borman out of Cincinnati LaSalle. He was the first man there, and he was helped out by number 93, James Wines, in there. And so it becomes third and go to go at the Marshall four-yard line, approaching the two-minute mark of the third period. Marshall leads by 17-3 and Eastern Michigan. Really threatening. This is third down from the four-yard line of the herd. Gordon wants to throw. He's scrambling in the end zone, wide open. Touchdown, Eastern Michigan. Darren Powell is on the receiving end, and this Huron team is back in this football game. Well, it Darren, is not over now. Darren Powell beat Leon Sims in the end zone that time. He... Uh, I hope we have a replay on this because you're going to have it right here it is. Now Gordon's going to roll out of the pocket to his right side. He's looking for Powell all the time. He's got plenty of time, some good blocks there. And you see the uh, reception. It's too late. <laughs> and it's six points. Darren Powell, who took a 68-yard touchdown pass from Gordon last year against Kent State, hooks up with Gordon. That one didn't cover too much, but it was a big touchdown as far as yardage goes. Anyway, the extra point is good, and we've got a new ball game. It's 17-10. Marshall's lead cut to seven. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. Dr. Bell is saying what he wanted to see me about? No, just that it was important. <laughs> it's snowing. We'll find out all about Jeannie. Now it's time to move up the heavy artillery. Yes, Master. <laughs> well, I'll have to fix him. Would you model a snake, send your bra, or give up your zipper? A hundred bucks, you got a deal. Join comic host Fred Trabellina and hit the jackpot with the show that puts a price on comedy. And I'll give you $90. Will you do it for $90? I'll for hundred. What it is is diced earthworms. It's the most outrageous new comedy game show of the year. Cash in on the laughs with anything for money. Sideline now, George Conley again with a real Kentucky connection here for the Marshall Big Green. Assistant Commissioner of the Kentucky High School Athletic Association, Louis Stout, whose son Juan Stout is the offensive center for Marshall. Lou, what do you think about the Big Green? Well, they're a different look than I've seen over the last three years, George, but they're, they're pleasing and they're exciting to watch. Well, I'll tell you what, it's always a pleasure to see you and that fine wife of yours, and I'm glad she's with you taking care of things. Well, and you and Juan better take care of yourself. Well, we'll have to do that. You know she's going to look out after us. Fans, Louis Stout, the Assistant Commissioner of the High School Athletic Association from Lexington, Kentucky, watching his son Juan play and up here every night for that game. All right, Wade. 17-3, or rather 17-10 now, following the touchdown. It was 17-3, and as we said, Eastern Michigan is back in this ball game, and Carl Fodor at that sensational first half has struggled in the third quarter. A couple passes have been intercepted. The herd needs a score. 
Bessling kicking off. Abercrombie at the five. Abercrombie at the 30 to the outside. 40. Abercrombie near midfield. It was that return in the first quarter that sparked Marshall to a touchdown. Robert Thompson may have saved the touchdown that time by Danny Abercrombie. Boy, he is Mr. Excitement. Watch it again. They could have seen him catch the football right at the five-yard line, follow his blockers up the field. He could have put a move right here on Anthony Fields right there, and that's what's bringing him up to the 50-yard line nearly. Marshall needs a score. And I guarantee you they know it. So does Stan Parrish. We're late in the third quarter. Eastern Michigan's back in this game. We're 17-10. Marshall's lead cut. McCoy, the freshman, 45. He's at the 40, and he just hammers his way almost to the 35. It's Clayton and Durham pulling down the freshman, Mike McCoy. But now the Marshall team shows that determined effort offensively, and we need to see more of it. Yes, we do. And uh, Mike McCoy, a rare, rare receiver now. You keep, you're going to see him come out of the backfield. And not only does he catch the ball, he knows he's got one man to beat. And he gets up to the 40-yard line. And by that time, you see Jerry Clayton on there. Uh, the free safety kind to come up and help out, but it's too late. They've got another first down. McCoy and Surratt behind Fodor. Hines is wide to the right. Abercrombie's in the slot on the right side. Boy, they have done a job on Tim Lewis holding him in check here in the second half. Abercrombie, 30, 25. He runs out of real estate, but Marshall is moving. Clayton finally catching up with the speed of Danny Abercrombie. There he is, number 27, Mr. Excitement. Watch him. Two successive completed passes here by Carl Fodor to Danny. Now watch him get outside. That's Boy, if he can get outside, he is unbelievable. He's got great acceleration. Football is being spotted at the Eastern Michigan 27. Second down and less than a yard needed. Tim Bristow is the tailback now for Marshall, number 23. He's in the backfield with McCoy. Bristow twisting and turning that football is going to be spotted at about the 16 yard line it's first down Marshall now just to keep everybody honest they're going to take little number 23 out of Randleman North Carolina watch him go spinning and getting the first down. the little guy is number 23 Timmy Bristow only a sophomore Tim Bristow has been a real spark uh, he hasn't carried too often but he is dangerous and Marshall needs a touchdown it is first down football about the 17 of Eastern Michigan. Late now in the third quarter. Fodor gets all the time he needs. And Abercrombie cannot hang on to it. A little bit trailing that pass. Abercrombie had to kind of sort of slow down. He was sort of spun around the wrong way. Yeah, Danny had the ball right on the seven there on his jersey. And he was going to spin around to the left side. And when he did, his momentum. And, you know, you see Bill Hines there getting a play. He's a messenger man. But uh, it's an incompleted pass. And... Still plenty of time. Second down coming up. Football back at the 17-yard line of Eastern Michigan. Less than a minute to go in the third quarter. Marshall leading by a touchdown, 17-10. Here's second down and 10 at the Eastern Michigan 17. McCoy is single setback. Over the middle, out of the reach of Mike McCoy. That time, a lot of pressure on Fodor, and they really didn't have the opportunity to get off the accurate pass he was hoping to. It looked like the same play that he had a moment ago coming out of the backfield and curling over to the left side and uh, just a little bit uh, off target that time. But I think Wade, it was a lot of pressure there that time on Carl. That's the name of killing the passing game. you got to get the man that's throwing the football. Well, give Eastern Michigan credit. Uh, they have done a tremendous job here in the third quarter as Folder just uh, threaded the needle time and time again in the first half. But now it's been a little bit more difficult. Here's a third down. Third and 10, 17 yard line. Here's the pressure again. He comes out of it, rolling. Pass in zone. Oh, down! Beautiful. Abercrombie. And that's the one they needed. Danny Abercrombie. Carl Folder came out of the pocket, had the time. Abercrombie, who has had a sensational game, who's been a big spark, couple returns on kickoffs. He has just come up with his fourth touchdown reception, and here it is. Watch Folder come out of the pocket and get the time he needs as Abercrombie breaks loose, and here is Abercrombie all by himself. Tremendous combination, <laughs> Folder to Abercrombie, and the Marshall team, and of course that's uh, a sign of a good team. You come back, 
needing a touchdown, and that gives him again some breathing room against Eastern Michigan. Scott Latour will try to stretch that streak here on PATs. He's good again. That is a big touchdown for Marshall. They needed that one. Marshall 24, Eastern Michigan 10. Mike, watch it again. Here it is. This is the uh, TD pass, and Abercrombie coming out of the backfield one more time. But I think right there is the senior leadership and the composure that you have. Ryan Swisher was standing over there on the other side of the end zone. He gave up the TD sign. He knew it all the way, and it really puts a spark back into the Marshall cause now because now they're out to 24 to 10, and they are a 14-point favorite in this football game, so the people say. But uh, there's still plenty of time. We've just got about 50 seconds left here in the third quarter. <laughs> Anything can happen. Marshall led 7-3 at the quarter, stretched that to 17-3 at half, and then that touchdown uh, in the third quarter by Eastern Michigan made it 17-10, and this touchdown, a dramatic one for the herd as they increase their lead again to two touchdowns, and they have that little breathing room, that cushion they need. Marshall shooting for its third straight win. It would be the first time in 19 years that Marshall's opened with three consecutive wins, Mike. Carl Foder is 20 for 34 in the air tonight, and you know just what he does. He's super, super composer for the senior. And uh, he really settled down on that drive because uh, he had been struggling. He had been intercepted twice in the third quarter after the sensational first half. Latula booms it with less than a minute to go. This is Patton at the five. What a tackle back around the 17-yard line. I think he pushed him back 10 yards. <laughs> the herd fired up. Let's give Jerome Hazard credit there, huh? <laughs> Jerome Hazard, number 84 of the special teams. Got his man. Eastern Michigan, in the waning moments of the third quarter, now trailing again by two touchdowns after they had fought back within a touchdown of the herd. We've got flags everywhere. Join us again uh, next Saturday in what should be one of the real great evenings of football in Marshall's long football history when the herd will battle the Furman Paladins here at Fairfield Stadium and the Southern Conference opener. And hopefully it'll be Marshall at that point 3-0. and And of course taking on the one of the powers of the Southern Conference, Furman a great opportunity and of course we urge the fans to get the tickets early next week Gaydash <clears throat> that her defense fired up now well the penalty a moment ago was as we say against Eastern Michigan and James Wines coming in to make the stop there looking at the defensive captain number 89 everybody knows number 89 John Logan It'll be second and about 14 for Eastern Michigan. Put the football at the Eastern Michigan 15. Final seconds of the third quarter. What has been a great night for football. The weather has just been ideal. It's a fall night. Gordon is scrambling. He could run. He's going to throw on the run. And it's dropped, I believe, by Simpson. Rick Simpson looks like he had it in his arms. Number yeah, 89. He sure did. Garfield Lewis was there with him. And I'm sure number 89 there. You look at him, Ricky Simpson is a little bit dejected over that. He should have had that one. Now, Garfield's got plenty of time. He likes to roll out of the pocket, as you always know. You can see there at the 10. He flies it up there. He should have had it at the 40. That is the end of the third quarter at Fairfield Stadium. Marshall 24, Eastern Michigan University 10. We'll be back for the final period in just a moment. If money is the only thing between you and a college education, then you have a good reason to come over to First Bank of Cerrito. Getting a good education can be very expensive, but having that education is well worth it. That's why First Bank is making student loans. Stop by and pick up your student loan application today. Our loan program applies to out-of-state schools, too. Money for your education. It's another good reason to come over to First Bank. First Bank of Cerrito. Member FDIC.
An emergency demands quick thinking and fast action. When you saw the man with the gun, what went through your mind? Well, I thought to myself, golly, that man has a gun. We found the car. Ain't that something? There ain't the teeniest little scratch on it. Welcome back to Fairfield Stadium, Wade Ute with Mike Todd, George Connolly, and Spider Brent Cunningham. And it's been a, a very enjoyable evening of football, and it hasn't been an easy one for the herd uh, for a while. Looked like they were going to run away from it, but uh, Eastern Michigan fought back, really made a game out of it, and we go into the fourth quarter. 24-10, that extra that touchdown a few moments ago just... Uh, came at the right time. I think that's going to be good for the herd, though, Wade, because they need to be tested here. They need to find out what they're made of instead of rolling over people 40 to nothing is great and all, but I think what you need to do is come in here and find out in the, I guess, the era of adversity, if you could put it in that manner. But that's what they need to do is find out if they can bounce back, find what kind of character they've got. Well, Fodor has overcome some adversity here in the third quarter. Uh, he threw two touchdown passes. A third one was almost intercepted. Then he came back and took him on the key touchdown drive. Sure did. And hopefully that will be the touchdown that uh, will give it the herd its third win. But we've got a lot of football remaining, and Eastern Michigan has the football. Staying on the ground, and there's a great effort. Uh, Jerry Gaydash literally fighting for yardage. Number 36, Gaydash carries the ball. Gaydash is a senior 200-pounder from Akron, Ohio. Well, the defense is held again, and as they always do, they get a good round of applause from the folks down below. And back at the round, the five is Bob Hirschman, an excellent punter for Eastern Michigan. A young man out of Utica. He's only a junior. Gets a good snap. And another kick, but we're a distance, but a return coming up by Garfield Lewis. Right up the middle! Met hard at about the 48-yard line by Tom Kiefer, a freshman out of Ohio, Hillsboro. Nice return by Garfield Lewis, one of the few returns he's had. And Carl Porter back in. Marshall's got good field position again. They're on the uh, their own 48, and here comes the machine. <laughs> Boy, it was a machine, especially in the first half. Time-wise, uh, the third quarter was dominated by Eastern Michigan. They held the ball for ten and a half. Marshall had it for only four and a half minutes. As we said, Eastern got back in the game. Bristow's in the backfield with uh, Mike McCoy. That's Bristow. We've got a young backfield there for Marshall. Bristow's a sophomore from North Carolina. And Mike McCoy, the, um, the fullback, is a freshman from Parkersburg. Yes, we do, and that's that's really a great, great uh, trait right there for any coach to have and with that air of success. Tim Bristow checks back out, replaced by the senior, Robert Surratt. Early in the fourth quarter, Marshall, 24, Eastern Michigan, 10. Carl Fodor has gone all the way at quarterback. He is throwing for two touchdowns. He has run for one. Latulip has added a field goal. Tim Lewis, 25-yard line. Tim Lewis with 10 receptions in the first half for 131 yards. Pulls down another big reception, tackled by Joe Paca. Here's Tim again, just coming out of that tight end spot and just rolling right over the middle. What great speed he has to get out there and great concentration, and he always draws a crowd. That's the 18th first down of the game for Marshall. Lewis caught a touchdown pass in the first quarter. We have an injured player. Number 69, shaking up on the play. Let's hope he's going to be okay. First down, Marshall. Ball is marked at the 25. Clock is running. Nearing the 13-minute mark. We're in the fourth quarter. Lewis is wide to the left on first down from the 25. Over the middle. Complete to Abercrombie. A couple yards to about the 23-yard line with Tom Kiefer, the freshman. Pass complete to 27. All these little, these doggone little, little uh, snap passes right over the middle, lull you to sleep. And about that time, Lewis or someone goes deep, maybe Brian Swisher, and they're going to kill you with it. So the passing game continues, his 22nd reception of the football game. Third quarter score, North Carolina State 23. 
That's quite a ball game. North Carolina State leading uh, Furman 23-20. Furman, of course, will be here next Saturday night. We'll have that for you on Channel 61 at 10 o'clock. Here's Folder. This is second down. He's got Surratt on the sideline. Surratt turns around and gets a couple extra yards. <laughs> Super effort. Finally pushed out of bounds around the 15. Hey, the I think he got the yard marker man, too, at the same time. Here it is again. Now uh, you see Carl going back out here, and right heading for the sidelines. He is, and there's Surratt trying to put the move on Jerry Clayton, but could not do it. And uh, the clock is stopped with 12:19 as they go out of bounds and have a first bound. First and ten for the herd at the 15-yard line of Eastern Michigan. Another touchdown may just do it. Marshall leading, 24 to 10. Under 13 minutes remaining in the game. Hines is wide to the left. Abercrombie in the slot. Boulder scrambling, throwing it deep. Dive by Lewis. He can't not come up with it. A little bit out of his reach in the end zone. Lewis has done it all, and he's been uh, almost uh, Houdini out there with some receptions, especially in the first half and with his double team. But that one, he couldn't quite catch up with. No, he couldn't. He had a lot of pressure put on him that time. Carl Foder did, and he had to roll out of the pocket. And... Uh, Robert uh, Capru there, I think his name is. He put a lot of pressure on him. You see some of the Marshall faithful, they're pretty happy about this 24-10 score. This is a second down and 10 with the football right around the 15. There's a nice little draw with uh, Tim Bristow busting up the middle for a few yards. Bristow's got a lot of acceleration, I think. He's He's a nice man to put in there and just kind of keep you honest. He, by the time you're waiting on Foder to throw the thing, he'll run it down your throat. Billy Hines will check in with a play, replacing Brian Swisher. Number 47 there is Matt Finley. He's the one who, in the first game for Young against Youngstown, had 12 tackles, recovered a fumble, and intercepted a pass and went 67 yards for a touchdown. Marshall takes a timeout with under 12 minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Marshall 24, Eastern Michigan 10. We'll be back at Fairfield Stadium in a moment. Your dog is a member of your family. Show you care. Make sure your dog gets the best of care. Visit your veterinarian. Regular checkups and vaccinations save lives. Preventive medicine is the gift of good health for someone you love. back to Fairfield Stadium, 24-10. Marshall leading, and it's been another great night of football. It has, and uh, with a 24-10 score, I think that's indicative of the way the ball game has went. But you got to give the Hurons credit, Wade. They, they came back, and uh, they scored a big touchdown a moment ago to put them within seven points. But Marshall, as I say, it really takes a lot out of you, but you got to come back and say, what kind of a person, what kind of a team am I? So let's see what we can do. They came back and scored March right down the field, and... Uh, Foder is just taking control. He's doing what a senior is supposed to do, and that's been the story of the ball game. Eastern Michigan uh, back home for the first time uh, this season. Uh, their home opener next Saturday night against Ohio University, a big game in the Mid-American, of course, in the Southern Conference. It's going to be a gigantic contest here at Fairfield. Marshall 
against Furman, and Marshall has never beaten Furman in football. Here's third and seven. Football. This is Fodor, and he is going to take a big loss. See where they mark it as he spilled beyond the 30-yard line, and leading that charge was uh, Derek Whitehead, a senior 266-pounder from Detroit. That's the one of the few times that they've really gotten to Fodor. Well, you're going to see number 70 come in here now. And he's going to get his sack. He smells that number 10, and he wants him and drags him down there at about the, uh, well, about the 32-yard line. Whitehead, who made that uh, tackle, number 70 for Eastern. He had uh, 60 tackles last year for the Hurons. And we're going to get a field goal, and this one's going to be another long one. Attempt of about uh, 47 yards. 47-yard field goal attempt by Scott Plutulip. It's going to be just short. Looks like he had the uh, accuracy, but not quite the distance. Just a uh, little bit of wind might have been blowing. It might have been all right, but just as you say, Wade, maybe about four or five feet shy, but uh, another value there for by the little man, number four. Yeah, look it keeps it interesting. Uh, still not over Eastern Michigan, staying uh, within uh, two touchdowns of the herd, and, of course, uh, when they were in that position earlier in this quarter, they struck back and closed the gap. Well, there's still plenty of time. 10-51 in the football game, I think it is, and there's still plenty of time. Anything can happen. This is the pitch, and this is Patton off the right side out to the 35-yard line with Brian Mays making the stop. Mays has to deny, deny that outside game that the Eurons have and exactly what the linebacker is supposed to do is move laterally out there and deny that type of uh, a game, and he did a good job. We have an injured player down across the way, and he appears to be in some pain. Looks like number 58, I think it is. So there is a timeout on the field, a timeout with the score. Marshall 24, Eastern Michigan 10. We'll continue with Marshall Eastern Michigan football from Fairfield in a moment. From heart to heart and to head, there's so many ways to understand. The light we share is love, the one that shines from up above. Share a little light, share a little light. This message of love has been brought to you by your friends, the Adventists. When it's something as important as a person's life, don't just call someone, call Care Unit. Care Unit is number one in the treatment of alcohol and drug abuse. Are you looking for a job and having trouble finding one? Let us help you improve your chances of finding a job. Through the Job Seeking Skills Training, you can learn better interviewing skills. Get help with filling out applications and writing resumes. Find out labor market trends and improve job search methods. The Department for Employment Services offers the Job Seeking Skills Training every second and fourth Tuesday of each month free of charge. Call or stop by the Department for Employment Services, 411 19th Street, Ashland, Kentucky, for more details. Catch a squirrel. No, Porky. Squirrels are wild animals, not pets. They like to be free. Couldn't they catch a pigeon? It's the same thing. Wild animals should be left alone. Don't bother them. They won't bother you. I got my jacket. So, going to catch a gold. Apparently, Carl Fodor, as you can see, the score with 10.39 to go has set another record. 24 completions in this one for... 328 yards, and uh, that's uh, not only uh, a completion mark, but a yardage mark, and uh, Boder again with another record-breaking performance tonight, but right now Eastern Michigan has the ball on second down, needing six at the Huron's 34-yard line. Darren Vernon out of bounds, so not only is Marshall trying uh, to win it's third straight, first time in 19 years, but we are seeing history uh, this season, this young season with the, the junior from Weirton, Carl Folder, triggering that offense. He's just rewriting the record books is what he's doing. Yeah, there you're looking at number 10, Carl Folder, 24 out of 40 for 300 yards. What a night for him. Marshall had thrown 80 times in the first two games, 42 passes in the first game. 
38 passes uh, last week and then again exploding tonight as the aerial circus continues. That's Matthews in the slot. Powell wide to the right. They go inside to Gatash and Gatash drives forward to the midfield stride. Garfield Lewis, a junior. Lewis has done a tremendous job at the weak corner slot for the herd. He had six solo tackles going into this game, and he's had a busy night. You know, to show you the difference, way that uh, offensive philosophies, I guess, uh, Eastern Michigan has only thrown 14 times today. <laughs> Seven out of 14 ain't bad, but it's a long way from 40. Second down. Plenty of time over the middle. And it looks like a Marshall interception by Mike Copenhaver, his second interception of the game, his third of the season. And this senior out of Brook High School, the top tackler last year, adds a little bit more spark to that secondary that has been outstanding tonight. You're going to look at the free safety now. Mike Copenhaver just come up there and just deny the football to uh, number 33, and that is Darren Vernon. You know, it's at the point now where you almost see uh, that secondary saying, I just dare you to throw the ball. <laughs> so, with that in mind, we have nine minutes and 34 seconds to go. Marshall, first down as the herd going back to work at the 35-yard line. And it's Tim Bristow up the middle. And, of course, we have said uh, how delighted we're, we are to be here, everyone at Channel 61. And uh, we really made it. We have seen... Uh, Three great football games, and this aerial performance under head coach Dan Parrish as Marshall, as you said, rewriting the record books. I'm just hoping that this place will be not only filled, but it'll be overflowing next week against Furman. I think it will. If Just wait and see. Here's Fodor. Over the middle. A little too high for Robert Surratt. And, of course... We're going to be thrilled to be back here, and we'll have the game for you next Saturday night at 10 o'clock. Yeah, you talked about the uh, passing game. We talked about Lewis, Abercrombie, and Swisher, uh, and these people like that. Tim Lewis is averaging about almost 20 yards per reception, and uh, coming into this ball game, he had 214 yards gained by the air. So you get people like that. Uh, well, Lewis with 19, Abercrombie with 13, Swisher with 16. It's quite an attack. Third down, needing about eight. Marshall 37-yard line. Hines and Abercrombie to the right. Long count by Fodor. Over the middle, under pressure, Surratt. Great catch at the 40-yard line. Robert dropped uh, a touchdown pass last week, and, man, he has come back with determination tonight. You know, I, I bet you the Eurons are sitting back here as we watch the play again, and Robert just comes out of the backfield. Two defenders there bouncing around on him, and, They'll just think, how many receivers do they have? You can't cover everybody. And he'll just throw to anybody. And we are seeing a record-breaking performance in the record book. I don't know if it's going to be able to handle the total tonight. It's 21st down so far for Marshall. What a passing performance. Surratt is, I believe, the lone setback. Oh, that's McCoy. And that's Fodor. <laughs> and there's number 23, Tim Bristow, as you said. Everybody gets into the act. Even Tim Bristow, the tailback, the sophomore. There he is. If the center was eligible, he'd probably be catching one, too. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Carl Fodor doesn't throw one to George Carley in a minute. Look at this. Right on the money to number 23, the young man out of Randleman, North Carolina, right near Mayberry. I guess. I don't know where it's at. First down, Marshall. Football just inside the Huron's 30. And... <clears throat> Marshall with three more home games, and uh, if you haven't seen them in person, you've got some aerial show to watch. They go back to the eye. Carl Fodor under a little pressure. Abercrombie dropped one. Well, he's done everything tonight yeah. well. I guess he's entitled to drop one there. Yeah, that makes him human, I guess. Less than eight minutes to go, and... Uh, you know, when you see this Marshall team and Carl Fodor throwing the ball, you don't want the game to end. It has been just an exciting football. Carl Fodor down, 26 out of 44. And that's pretty a good night's work right there. And I'd say that football fever has struck Huntington. Well, it's a different type of football, and I know the fans are enjoying this. This is a, a, a revolution. Almost. I guarantee you, no one's left. No. 
It's 24-10. Marshall looking for the clinching score. There's the reverse. Abercrombie. Boy, he's dangerous, but good defensive work by uh, the Hurons to contain Abercrombie at about the 28-yard line. And it was uh, Mike Burns, a freshman, number 66, 6'4", 220 out of Utica. Give him credit. You know, Danny uh, is so doggone versatile. He just came right around there on the, on the, behind the quarterback, behind the pocket, and coming up there. He's so quick and so doggone versatile. It just, he's just so dangerous. It'll be third down for Marshall, third and eight, football at the 28-yard line of Eastern Michigan. Hurons have played well. They have really struggled the last few years. Over the middle, and almost intercepted. Uh, Surratt, uh, he was still had his back to that pass, and as he turned around, that ball had been just deflected, and we didn't have a chance. Fortunately, it wasn't intercepted. That's right. I believe we've got George Connolly set for another sideline comment. Wade, bad news for the Marshall fans down here on the sideline. Steve Went, the quick tackle, seems is out for the rest of this ball game. And now with Sagley out, they're missing two frontline players. Back up. Thank you, George. Here we go. Another field goal attempt by Scott Latulip. This one will be an effort of 45 yards. 45 field, 45 yard field goal attempt. I think he's got the distance. But it's no good. Looked like it was a little bit off to the left. Well, you saw the referee say, nope, it's a little bit. He got the distance, and I think he made up the six feet there the last time he came a little shy. But, well, Scott's going to get one of those. Just wait and see. Scott Latula boomed a field goal in the uh, second quarter of 37. But he hasn't quite been able to zero in from uh, beyond that range. But Marshall has a lead of 24-10 with about seven minutes to go in the ball game. And Carl Fodor again has rewritten the record books passing wise, and the fans here have enjoyed it tonight. And yeah, we still have seven minutes left in the football game, and here come the Eurons again. And it's not over. Nope. Long, deep pass. Wow, he dropped the ball. Matthews, and I was about ready to say that Eastern Michigan's gonna be back in this game again. He got right, at, right in front of Garfield Lewis and beat Garfield there at about the 22-yard line. And you also see number 92, the defensive end. This coming. looked like a good pass. Look at this. He just floats it up there. Just a oh, great, great pass. And he had the darn thing. Can't do more than that. And that has to be a tough break for Eastern Michigan and quarterback Robert Gordon as Marcus Matthews, a sophomore from Detroit, couldn't hold on. Here's second and 10, I formation. There's the pitch, and that's Patton with great speed, twisting and turning and ripping his way up to about the 41-yard line where senior Brian Mays brings him down, and a flag has been dropped, and that could mean some extra yardage for the Hurons of Eastern Michigan. you got to give the ball uh, carrier credit, too. You see the personal foul there, but you'll see the replay here. Now watch this. The pitch is not really that good. Well, it, you know, he almost dropped the darn thing. But uh, he still gets up there, and Brian Mays, boy, he's done a great job at the linebacker spot. You know, it's amazing as Marshall has dominated this game uh, and led all the way. An Eastern Michigan touchdown with still over six minutes to go. Will put them uh, again back within striking distance. So hang on. That's their 14th first down of the night. Marshall's lead, only two touchdowns. Darren Vernon at the 40-yard line. Well, we have some activity going on down there, but no flags yet. Makes the tackle. <clears throat> Scott Latulip uh, missing those long field goals that would have just about uh, clinched it for uh, the herd, but the Hurons are hanging in there with six minutes to play, and they're got good field position, second down. And four at the 39. That's Gaydash. And he drives an near the 15-yard line. Well, we've said this earlier. It's been a rather strange game where Marshall just can't quite put him away. Put the icing on the cake. They've had opportunities. There's Gaydash going through this little hole, Wade, and it's a small hole. And once he gets up there, look at this. I'm not going down. Come on and get me. Eurons are going to win some football games this year. They sure are. I just hope it's not tonight. 
Here's Gordon. There's still a lot of time to go. Five minutes. Over the middle to Steve Knopf's to the 15-yard line. Steve, the leading receiver, freshman. We'll see where they mark the football. Clock is still running, nearing the five-minute mark in the fourth quarter, and time, of course, becoming a major factor. And Eastern Michigan knocking on the door. It is second down, needing six, ball at the 13-yard line of the herd. Pow to the right. I formation. There's the pitch. That's Vernon, left side. Gets inside the 10. That really didn't fool anybody that time. I think everybody was there but the fraternity guys, I think. But really, they're getting inside the 10, and that's what they want to do now. One of the Euron players shaken up. It's going to be third down. It looks like uh, third and about a yard. They have marked that football inside the 10 around the 9. Again, a lot of people to thank uh, making this game possible. We have a, a moment here. Director John Fawcett, floor director Pat Elam, and working replay Mike Fisher, and audio Randy Fleming. You've seen some graphics. Uh, we want to thank Dave Lavender on camera, Mike Baldridge, and Don Williams, and Donnie Moore, our production assistants, uh, Charlie Munn and Claudia Fisher, engineers Virgil Atkins, Roger Ashworth, and Rob Griffith. Third down, about two yards needed. Football at the nine. They need a score. Field goal is really not going to help here. This is third and nine, or correction, third and two at the nine for Eastern Michigan with about four and a half to play in the ball game. Near the five, Darren Vernon and that may be enough for the first down. I think it is. I think it's no doubt about it. He's got the first down. We're at sort of a tough angle here, but that is a first down. Wait, I'd like to say something right now. I was asked to mention it, that the Marshall University Bookstore has a, sort of an annex down below us here. And for you fans that would like the Marshall uh, banners and hats and all the things they have, if you could pick them up here at the bottom of Fairfield Stadium and uh, fill up your house with them. It's first and goal to go. That football is at the six-yard line. Gordon wants to throw in the end zone, and he, I think, just threw it away because there was great coverage as Gordon finds uh, the AstroTurf. He ended up uh, on his uh, back. Tony Lelly there applying the pressure. He's the senior out of Weirton, the defensive end, 215 pounds. And so that now brings up a second down. Football is being marked back at the six-yard line. It's go to go with less than four minutes to go, and again... Eastern Michigan saying, hey, touchdown here, we're back in it, and there's still time. You know, the crowd, I just got up and looked out the window at all the crowd, and they're, they're still here. And so are the Hurons. This is second and goal from the six. Matthews wide to the right. There's the pitch. Right at the goal line, just short of it, Gary Patton, the freshman from <coughs> Lorraine, Ohio, that ball should be marked about the one-yard line. Clock is winding down. Watch it again. Here's the pitch now. The key is the execution, and you're going to see him come up there in number 93, one of the first men there to knock him down, James Wines, and they're knocking on the door, third and one. Third and goal to go, three and a half minutes to go. Haddix is in the backfield at fullback with the gate ash. This is third and goal, about a yard away from a Eastern Michigan touchdown. Gate Ash off the right side. I don't believe he I did don't it. I think he did, Wade. He's the power runner, the 200 pounder, and what a great defensive effort by Marshall. This is fourth and goal coming up. The crowd across the way, the student body at all, love it. Right on the one, not a gain at all. Eastern's going to call a timeout. We're going to keep it here, Mike. Uh, this is, without a doubt, the biggest play of the game for Eastern. They've got a score here to keep this game alive from the Huron standpoint. And Eastern Michigan uh, embarrassed in their opener, losing to Youngstown State 31-7.
Uh, they had two weeks to get ready for this game. They've been well prepared. They played good football. They have struggled. They've lost their last 11 games, but uh, give the Hurons and Jim Harkum a lot of credit. Uh, they have shown a lot of fight out there, and again, they're they're still alive. Yeah, you, you, when you get down there, like losing 11 in a row, Wade, you look up, and there's no place to go but up, and uh, they've got a lot of pride, and they know that. I'm going to tell you something right now. If the Hurons score here, and, and like you say, it's going to put them back in the ball game, 24-16, 24-17, but then again, uh, I would be a bit surprised to see an onside kick right after that. Carl Fodor has put on a record-breaking passing performance again. He's throwing a couple touchdown passes, one to Lewis, one to uh, Abercrombie. But he has not been able to shake off the Hurons, and here is fourth and goal to go from one yard Listen out. Listen to this crowd. Listen at them. They're standing. Listen at him. Fourth and goal. Let's see if Marshall can hold Eastern Michigan. This is the play of the game. Fourth quarter, fourth and goal. Right, that is a it. touchdown for Jerry Gaydash on fourth and one off the right side. And, you know, we mentioned that Mike Smith, the right tackle, 275. He's got to open up a little room, and that's exactly where Gaydash hit, that right tackle slot. That's I, a big touchdown. Here it is again. If I was going to give the football to a man to get a TD, it would have been that man right there. And there's a great camera work by our crew right on the goal line. And it puts them right back in the ball game now. 24 to 16. The extra point now, of course, will make it 17. And look for the onside kick. I wouldn't be a bit surprised that they do it. Extra point coming up. Mario Ferretti. Soccer style kicker. He's got it. So it is now 24 to 17 with a little over three minutes remaining in this game. And though Marshall has uh, dominated the uh, offensive stats and the record-breaking performance passing-wise by Carl Folder, the Hurons have stayed within striking distance and Marshall with a few times uh, had opportunities to put it out of reach, maybe the field goal by uh, the Tulip. Uh, he went for the long ones, couldn't quite hit. One of those probably would have done it. There it is. There's a touchdown that puts Eastern Michigan back in this game, and you can't leave this place now. Nope, not now. There's still plenty of time. Three minutes and four seconds left. We're going to see what Marshall's made out of, and you got to give credit to the Hurons and uh, the coach. Uh, I guarantee you that those guys have done a super job. The last time that uh, Eastern had pulled within a touchdown, Marshall's offense turned it around again, and Carl Folder drove him for a touchdown. Let's see what they do here with a little over three minutes to go. Mike mentioned the possibility of an onside kick. Well, here comes the ball. It hasn't been placed yet, but let's see what they do with it. They may figure, well, we've got some time to do it. Let's kick it away. Take our chances. The big spark on these kickoffs have been uh, the returns by Danny Abercrombie. That's what they're going to do, Wade. They're going to kick it away and take their chances with it. These three minutes and four seconds, a lot of time. They didn't want to have, have Marshall with that great field position right there around the 50, anyhow. 24 to 17. He hits it low, takes a big bounce, and let's see what Abercrombie can do. He has been exciting. 25 near the 30. And Marshall has fairly decent field position, and right now they need a first down and ball control, leading by seven with just under three minutes to go, Mike. You just hit the uh, key words, uh, ball control is the name of the game right now. They must sustain this drive, and they're going to do it on the ground. I don't think they want to go so much right down to the air, Wade, because an interception right now at this point is going to put them right back in the ball game. And so I think they'll just try to uh, grind it out here and uh, grind out the clock on the ground. At this time, uh, over the last two games uh, in the fourth quarter, Marshall had had uh, things wrapped up and they were thinking about uh, post-game celebrations, but not tonight. Nope, they're going to it. Under pressure. Surratt's wide open, dropped the ball, and that is a tough break for the herd. And had Eastern Michigan taken that pass and intercepted it, Watch out. That's what I'm saying now. You have to get, I'll tell you one thing about Stan Parrish. He's sticking to his guns. He said he's going to throw the ball at any time, but he's doing that. Had that ball been intercepted now, it'd have been just a different situation here. Is that your totals 20, on passes? 26 out of 46 right now. Second down. Marshall needs a first down. Well, they'll throw the ball anytime. Single setback. Football is at the 29. 
Here it is. That is McCoy. And it looks like he is short of a first down. The freshman, Mike McCoy. E.J. Early, a junior from Columbus, Ohio, prevented the freshman from Parkersburg from coming up with the first down. And now here is a very, very important play as we watch the replay. Here's Mike McCoy again coming out of that backfield. And uh, nice concentration. A nice hit by number 80. Boy, he laid a lick on him, E.J. Early. This may be the most important play of the game for Marshall. It's third down. If they don't make a first down, they're going to be forced to give it up. A little over two minutes to go in the game. It is third and about four. There it is. That may be the biggest play. That is the freshman Mike McCoy, a walk-on who last week led Marshall on the ground. And that catch right there might turn out to be the most important reception of this game. Now look at it again. Two consecutive receptions for Mike McCoy out of Parkersburg. And, oh, what a hit again. E.J. Early is certainly hitting people, but it's a little bit too late. Now, I'm going to tell you something. It was all Lewis and people in the uh, first half. Mike McCoy has made two very, 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 very important catches. And the clock is running. 1.52 remaining in the football game. Marshall leading 24-17. It has been a thrilling, exciting evening of football at Fairfield Stadium. There is Bristow, and he cannot go through the middle. A ball club like Eastern Michigan, 11 consecutive losses, falling behind in this ball game, 17 to three. They could have said, hey, well, we can't do it. We're just uh, jinxed. They've come out here in the second half and they have really, I'm sure, shook up some of the fans and a few of the Marshall players too. And they one. have, they've done exactly that. And it, it, but I'm saying this for, for Marshall too. I said it earlier, Wade, this is good for Marshall. I, I'm glad to see they're in a football game where they have to, to really put out a little bit more than they had to in the past. And this is good for them right now. I'm glad to see that they're uh, challenged. If Marshall wins this game, we've said this a few times, it will be uh, the first time in 19 years uh, that uh, the herd has won uh, three straight three and oh, and uh, if they're going to do it, it's not going to come easy. And they're doing things this year that no Marshall team has been able to do in the last 20 years. No, they haven't. Well, two big football games around the uh, country today. If you haven't heard, Kentucky beat Indiana 48-14. West Virginia beat Virginia Tech 13-7, which is, I think, uh, you know, about par for West Virginia. They just keep rolling right on. It was West Virginia's defense that won it. Hey, one big high school game, Wade, I want to mention right now. The Portsmouth Trojans upset Ironton 19-10 to and ended that regular season 64-game streak. And that, you got to give Bob Lutz credit down there at Ironton. Wow, what a game. Here is second down and 10, football at the 44-yard line. Again, Folder. Abercrombie makes a great move, breaks away and goes to about the 44, and that should be another first down for the herd. <clears throat> and under pressure... Some dramatic receptions. McCoy, now Abercrombie, and it has just been a sensational aerial display. Here's Carl Fodor again. And I guess really, you know, we talked about it a moment ago. Would they stay on the ground and grind out the clock? Heck no. Those are the days of the past. We're going to throw the doggone thing, go with our strength, and that's exactly what the philosophy is here. And those short passes out of the backfield, they have been really working. Oh, super, super. This is what's going to put people in Fairfield right from right now on. First down, 44-yard line. Approaching the one-minute mark. McCoy up the middle. Eastern's going to have to stop the clock. 59 seconds to play. And uh, as far as total passes, uh, Boulder's nearing the 50 mark. Isn't I it? have him down for, well, for 49. And that's very... <laughs> that's close point. enough. Yeah. <laughs> as close as you can get it, but... Uh, He's right up near there. Officially, we'll have it after the game, so hang around for that. So Carl's going to have a few uh, marks to put into the uh, record book, and uh, though this game is not over 59 seconds remaining, I think uh, Marshall fans can breathe a little bit easier right now with a second down coming up, and I think George Conley has some timely comments on the sidelines right now. And it's amen, <laughs> amen time. Turn out the lights, the party's over. The team is Marshall Big Green, three now, and zero in the loss column. Back, wave. And so the uh, Stan Parrish aerial show hitting new heights, as uh, Stan had uh, said, 40 passes a game, but uh, we're thinking 50 and maybe more before this one's over. You know, at the early, at the outset of the season, Wade, Stan Parrish said nothing less than six wins would be a successful season for them. 
And if he can get this one under his belt, it looks like he's going to have 59 seconds to go. Uh, this will be halfway there. And then you've got the Southern Conference standing in your way. And I guarantee you this place will be packed next Saturday, Saturday night to see what they can do with the people down here in the Southern Conference. All right, second down. Let's just hope there's no mistake here. There's still 59 seconds to go. And let's see if Marsha will just uh, hold on to the football. They're trying to. This is McCoy. And uh, we're not sure how many Eastern timeouts are left, but uh, they're going to have to take whatever they've got left here because the clock is winding down with 47 seconds to go. And Marshall is leading 24-17. And I don't know if Eastern can stop the clock now. They have no timeouts left officially uh, on the uh, scoreboard anyhow. They're not indicating any, so it looks like they're out of timeouts. I think right now we can safely say... Uh, Marshall is going to go into the Furman game undefeated in what has to be one of the big football games in the school's history. Let's see if Fodor will just fall on the football. That's what I would do, and that's I would what he too. did. That should do it. And I mean, it was a great win for the herd. Not an easy win, a dramatic win. And the kind of win that makes the ball club, and I think they're ready for Furman now. Marshall has won it over the Eastern Michigan Hurons, 24-17, and as you said, not very many people left. You can see they're still here. They enjoyed this one. I what an aerial show by Carl Folder. I don't know how many people were here. They were estimating around 15 to 16,000 that were supposed to have been there at the beginning of the game. And a very happy Marshall faithful down below. Uh, the ball is rolling, fans. Happy days are here again, and you want to be back here next Saturday night at 7 o'clock where Furman and the Paladins coming in here. 24 to 17 is the final score. Marshall had taken an early 7-3 lead. Increased it to 17-3 at halftime before Eastern Michigan really fought back in the second half and really made a game of it. We'll be back for some final thoughts here at Fairfield Stadium. Marshall has won its third in a row, first time in 19 years, defeating Eastern Michigan University 24-17. We'll be back in a moment. No other challenge in the world comes close to that of being a Marine. If you have what it takes, here's what you could be part of. The Marines are one of the proudest teams in the world, unequaled in pride, readiness, and respect. And if you're up to the challenge, maybe you can be one of us, the few, the proud, the Marines. Hi folks, I'm Josh Taylor. You know, we Americans exercise regularly, year after year, hundreds and hundreds of hours, so we can keep our bodies looking good and feeling great. However, most of us don't take the time to use two basic health care items, a toothbrush and dental floss. Using these daily will keep your gums and teeth every bit as healthy as your body. And after all, a healthy body is something to smile about, right? A message on behalf of the California Society of Periodontists brought to you by Oral-B. This is a cigarette. Like this, it's absolutely harmless. This is a match, and it too is absolutely harmless. Uh, but together, they can create the biggest problem of your life. The heart attack rate for smokers is much greater than that of non-smokers. Where there's fire, there's smoke. Ah, that feels better already. 
Save your breath and your heart. Don't smoke. The American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. All right, coach, we're three for three. Let's go for what he's like. You got it. Next week. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Man, guys hey. doing a great game plan would work well. Yeah. You just had a few mistakes that came up. We were flat. We were very fortunate we won it. We made enough plays. And, uh, yes, well. yeah. All right. Coach Stan Parrish and win number three. The big green thundering herd goes up now 3-0. Looking for number four against the Furman Paladins next week. Wade, what do you say? I say it's been a great night of football. Marshall has done it now. And uh, good teams win games like this. And uh, what a performance. Uh, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing this one over again. 24-17. The passing in the first half was nothing short of sensational. Carl had to cool off, as we said, and he did cool off. But uh, I'll tell you, Marshall scored when they needed it, and the defense did the job when they needed it. That's exactly right. They've got, uh, they've got a sign down here at the north end of the stadium, the Crunch Bunch, they're starting to call the defense here. And they, uh, they are really getting a... Uh, into the crowd. The crowd's getting into these uh, these young men, and I'm glad to see that the people are coming back and football is back here the way it should be at a, at a Division I AA school. Uh, the Paladins are coming on here, but I'll tell you one thing. Marshall is going to be ready for them. They, I'm glad it was this type of a game. I said it earlier. I'm glad they were challenged because now they know what the price may have to be. We'd like to mention tonight that the First Bank of Cerrito where you've got a good reason to come over to First Bank has been happy to bring you Marshall University Thundering Herd football here on Channel 61. Very quick uh, wrap-up on the scoring. Touchdown pass uh, to Tim Lewis. Marshall led 7-3 at the quarter. A field goal by uh, Ferretti of 21 yards for Eastern uh, Michigan. Second quarter, Folder went for a yard and a touchdown, 14-3. Field goal by Latula, 37 yards, 17-3 Marshall at half. Uh, touchdown pass to uh, Powell for uh, Eastern Michigan, 17-10, third quarter. Marshall came roaring back. Touchdown pass to Abercrombie. It was 24-10. Another touchdown in the fourth quarter by uh, Eastern Michigan. Cut the lead to 24-17. And then Marshall, a couple big plays uh, in that fourth quarter, holding onto the football and running off the clock. They win at 24-17. What a great start for the herd. It is, and I'll tell you one thing. That it, it, the, the, the one thing that is repetitive in every game, there is such a cast, a supporting cast, that really goes to that really goes to the, the entire cast that uh, Fodor has going for him. So I think they've done a great job. Join uh, us next Saturday night. It'll be Marshall against Furman, and what a game that'll be. 24-17. Marshall wins it. Wade Ute, Mike Todd, George Conley saying so long from Fairfield Stadium. potato pancakes. Dr. Bernardo, you don't know how excited I am to be here. I've waited so long to meet you. Yes, I, I'm really looking forward to helping you with your experiments. I, I don't know if you've read my, uh, my latest book, Advanced Sexual Positions, How to Achieve Them Without Laughing, but it's getting to be a classic. I'm familiar with it. I think it's wonderful how you men of science have finally gotten around to sex. All the girls at the Globe are so pleased with your work on respiration during orgasm. <laughs> A mere trifle compared to my real one. Doctor, uh, I read a statement you made that uh, you felt that the average length of a man's penis should be 19 inches. Doesn't that seem a little long? Long? My friend, I'm making discoveries you wouldn't dream of. Yes, I know, but, but 19 inches, I mean, that's... Does that sound mad? That's what they call Mid Masters and Johnson's Clinic. Mad. Because I had visions of explorations in sexual areas undreamed of by lesser human beings. It was I who first discovered how to make a man impotent by hiding his hat. I was the first one to explain the connection between excessive masturbation and entering politics. It was I who first said that clitoral orgasm should not be only for women. They laughed at me, ridiculed me, said I was mad. <laughs> but I showed them. <laughs> They threw me out of Masters and Johnson's. No severance pay. And I had it coming. But I showed them. <laughs> Are we having dessert? Oh, come. I want to show you my laboratory. Be gone. 
Clean up this table and hurry. You must forgive Igor. He was part of an experiment of mine that backfired. Using an electrical generator, I gave him a four-hour orgasm. He had fun, but he turned out like this. Posture, posture. Here it is. Here's where I'm discovering new facts about sex. That's what'll make me a great man one day. Dr. Bernardo, what is all this? Come this way and you'll see. Here I'm studying premature ejaculation in a hippopotamus. How often does that problem come up with a hippo? Here I'm forcing a man to have intercourse with a large rye bread. They're getting on famously. Here, I'm going to take the brain of a lesbian and put it into the body of a man who works for the telephone company. Yes, but why? What good will this do anybody? It'll show those fools who call me mad. But, Doctor, this is immoral. Nonsense. The human mind is capable of many strange things. Look, each day for the past year, I feed her nothing but silicone. She used to be flat-chested. Give me another year and I'll watch out. You're insane. Uh, that's what they said at Masters and Johnson. And all because I built a 400-foot diaphragm. Birth control for an entire nation at once. You, you will be the subject of my newest experiment. Me? Yes. Look here. In here I have 20 scouts. I want to measure your respiration when they gang bang you. 